Yo, what's going on, guys? My name is D Tacos. It's a new show called The Daily Taco. I'm basically going to be talking about news, politics, entertainment, anything that's really popping. Um, I'm going to be giving my opinions on some stuff. You may like it. You may not. It's just how it's going to be. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. My first one, my first show was with my cousins from Greece, actually, George and Alex. They're originally from here. They just recently moved there. Alex has been living there for a little bit. Uh, George just recently moved, made the, made, the, made the jump from New York to Lesbos. It's called the Lesbian Report because they're from Lesbos, Greece. Um, I did it with me, my sister, with Alex and George. It was a fun little conversation. We talk about Greece, how it's like there compared to New York, what's going on with COVID down there, the restrictions there compared to here. Um, and a bunch of stuff. We do get a little political and shit. We pop off a little. Uh, you know, it is what it is. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, agree to disagree. Um, so without further ado, this is the Daily Taco, and this is the Lesbian Report with uh, my lesbian co- cousins. Enjoy. Oh, like, subscribe, do all that shit you need to do to, like, you know, keep this shit going because I don't really want to get a regular job. Thanks. From Athens. Yeah, we came here this morning, bro. This is authentic. We read the name. Oh, I didn't they know. They did it specifically for this. Hold on, yeah. hold on. Yeah, bro. Jesus, we flew dude. here. We took I risks for you, bro. Right, right. For your Private show. plane. Bitcoin's up to 20 grand. Kid. Shut up, bro. Keep <laughs> out. I mean, we are recording this, but... Yeah, so uh, our, our cousin Jairo is a Bitcoin millionaire. <laughs> oh, crap. When you mean millionaire, do you mean one million Bitcoin or one million dollars? You've Bitcoin? made one multi. I don't know. Dollars. You've made multi millions off Bitcoin. That's correct. That is correct. Can you guys Yo, figure out your we seating listening. arrangement so that know, what what podcast were you on yesterday that we were listening to yesterday? Stell's talk sports. Stell's talk sports. Fat guy fat sports, talk sports. So we were playing the Stell's fat people talk sports. We were playing ping pong. Fat guys have, sports time. Fat guy sports time, excuse me. So we're playing ping pong yesterday, and we have that bumping at, like, cruising through streets and being obnoxious to people, yeah. that kind of volume. And all of a sudden, you guys start talking about Yorho. And somebody says, yo, Jairo, oh, yeah. if you listen to this much love, huh? And he made this like, yeah, bro, he's retired now. He made millions <laughs> of a Bitcoin, and he retired. It's true. And it seemed like everybody else on the panel was like, yes, he did. That's yeah. <laughs> no question around. Don't let everybody yeah, know. Exactly. I own, I own, I own 0778 Bitcoin. Oh, nice. So what's that? But it's up 40% since I bought. So it, it cracked 20,000 today or yesterday. I bought it when it was not a good time to buy it. I have lost money on Bitcoin. I'm back. Bought it Did like you? at 19,000 yeah. when up. everyone was buying it. It hasn't gone up to where I got it. It's, it's at all time highs, I think. Oh, yeah, shit. it's over nice. 20,000. That's fun. Amanda, how are you? I'm all right. You know, living the yeah. dream, teaching American we didn't children. I, I yes, would have, I would have written different notes if I knew you were. That's true. It was a last minute thing. Very really. last minute decision. Nice. Welcome. Nice. Yo, Dimitri. I'm excited to be we here. We tried to make it big on this thing because when are you going to have your dad? <laughs> I spoke to him about doing it. He said, Yeah, let me know the subject. So I'm prepared. Like, to be fair, do I did the same thing though. I looked at you and I was Needs like, What are the talking subject. points? And you, yeah, your dad is just let him know that he is the subject, period. Like, you don't need that's it. You don't need to talk about something he, else. Like, just, he was telling me some stories about his family from back in the day in uh, Sparti about like my grandfather, like they went up to fucking like by Albania to fight Nazis and shit. Nice. And one of my dad's, one of my grandfather's brothers, like got into like a beef or whatever, and then just walked uh, over like a girl in the in the choreo in the village, and just rolled up and like clipped a guy sitting at the platea, like fucking Godfather style. Do you know the Papu Cristo story and how why we're around basically? I mean, no. Let's go. You know better than I do. About the sisters? The sisters. Right. And... So, Papu Cristo, I found this out from our Tia Mary in Chalkida, uh, Metonia. Basically, Yaya's older sister, Calliope, I think, was actually in love with Papu. <gasps> yes, this is true. I didn't know. And Papu I was just like, that. fuck that. I want the young one. And took Yaya the Madia and they left. Like, they eloped. Get out of here. In the United the States of America. Not no, like they were already in. Came here. here. Yeah, no, I think they were already, you know who Calliope is? No. She's Mary Pitt's mother. Uh huh. Okay. Calliope was Mary Pitt's mother. Right, they we're, came we're here too, too. Inside fucking the. Uh, I was like, nah, I'm not about that. I don't know, though. 
That's why. Yeah. Also, I don't know the exact people, but didn't one of Yaya's didn't Yaya's father shoot one of her brothers or something? No, like that? no, one of Yaya's brothers died when he was very young. So one of Yaya's Not brothers, shot. or what? Not shot. He was eight years old. What? He was eight, during the Civil War. This is why they left. They didn't yeah. leave because of this event. They left because of the Civil War. That's why they left in like the fifties. Mm-hmm. Basically, he was like watching over the the trees, the groves, the orchard, orchards. Rica. You pronounce the ch or is it a k? orchard? It's a ch. It's orchard. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and so he was watching over it, and just like a stray it. bullet from a neighborhood uh, neighboring Corio just got him. Eight years old, muerto. Yikes! And so that happened. Wild. What yeah, a yo, the Civil War, the Civil War in Mani was like bananas. Where's like, Mani, bro? That's Ma- like, oh, it's where we're from, James. You're what? editing this, right? You're yeah, editing this wrong. part out, bro. Edit this part out. This no, part he out. likes to. Go. He likes to let people know that he's not this amazing, wonderful person who's a genius. Uh, I want to know no, what yeah, Mani you're, short you're, for. You're underrated. You underrate yourself. What is Mani you're, short for? Nothing. Nothing. That's the Mani is the game? region. Mani, okay, Mani is the region. Konia is the normal. And then Mani is a part of this. Nomo is like a, not a county, whatever's above a county. Like and a then problem. Mani is like a smaller subset of that. And yeah. the Jorja we're from are all in Mani. So we're all Maniates. Like we're not Spartiates really. Yeah, we're right. Sparty is right. So we're Lacones and Maniates. I know Laconia. There you go. There you go. Mani is a region that has Laconia. in Laconia and no, happens in Mesimia, which is where the Kalamata is. My dad loves to be like, Croques, Laconia, Levetova, Greece. Yo, your dad was very helpful. I did a road trip last year, and your dad was super helpful. And of course, I went to Croquez and took a picture on the platea, sent it to your father. I'm sure that's you where say. my that's where my great what is it, grand uncle? I don't know all those terms. That's where he got shot. I was at, I I went. He I shot somebody. Yeah, he didn't get shot. He, he shot somebody. Well, you know our other. You know why we have cousins in Madagascar, right? Well, yeah. I didn't even, I didn't even know we had cousins in Madagascar. Yeah, we have so, cousins in Madagascar yeah, because we'll step back. we have cousins in Madagascar that. Uncle Pete had, um, I don't know how Theo Peter. I don't think Theo Peter ever went to Madagascar, but that he referred to as black as the ace of spades. And so what had happened? Okay, that's yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> and so what had happened? It's descriptive, not descriptive. Racist, it's sure, descriptive. Yeah, totally. But what had happened is that one of our uncles had a dog, and the neighbor had sheep, and the dog went and attacked one of the sheep, and so the neighbor freaked out and shot the dog, and so our uncle went to the local priest and was like, hey, neighbor shot my dog. I don't know what to do. Can you give me guidance? And apparently the priest in a case of ill-timed humor was like, just kill the guy. And so our uncle was like, that's, I'm going to do that. Stage advice. Thank you. Yes, that's correct. (laughs) Stage advice. And he went with the Lord's blessing and (laughs) murdered his neighbor. I mean, if Jesus Christ says, yeah, you go Jesus Christ said, it. it gets better. He then goes to the priest and is like, yeah, I killed him. And the priest was like, what is what, wrong what with fuck? you? What are you doing? You told me to do it, bro. Right. So he kills the priest. And then they were like, we can't have this. That's too Jesus much. Christ, and they bro. put him on the first ship this out of Europe. like a fucking movie. No, he was exiled. He was exiled no, from Madagascar. He was exiled from Madagascar. Yeah. There's a lot of Game of Thrones in our family back then. Oh, a whole lot. Holy and they shit. just put him on the first ship to leave Europe. And unfortunately for him, it went to Madagascar. And that's and where he just decided to get off. Or was like, he might be having there. a great time. I don't know what the situation is in Madagascar, but yeah, he's we island. Hit them up. We that's should, crazy, we find bro. Them. I have cousins from my dad's side who came here like in the twenties and shit. And um, their last name, I guess, because when they came in, they say their last name. They don't spell it the same way. Like we spell it with a K. And yeah, a they K, spell it with a C. They spell it with a C. And tacos is T A K T A C O S. Yeah. That's and we're related that's to wrong. That's so they're like con- they're almost like the word contact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay. You guys did a better job. I know, but I, it's I, discovered, I-, I discovered something about our nickname, uh, James. I'm sure that I hope it's got to you, Dimitri. What? It has not. It has not. What? That in our family, the two oldest men both have nicknames based on not completely wrapped savory yeah, food. Sandwich. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, you said that on Thanksgiving, I think. I should have. I, I should like that. That's also. interesting. That yeah, is that, interesting. That's how bananas. Yo. Yeah. Do you guys know yeah. a fajita that we can get into? Yeah. yeah. That's, all right. Amanda, do you have any any <laughs> Latin lover in your life? That no. We can start no, not, not that there's anything wrong with that. Not currently. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm a Latin lover guy. George is a Latin lover. Show me your chest again. Show him your chest again. Thank you. Oh, look at that. How's the loss going? How is it over there? Is it like the end of the world? Is it just completely shut down? You guys are in Lesbos. Can you guys like even leave your houses or? Oh, you know, yeah. I, like, I can explain. We can leave our homes. We have, there are six valid reasons that you can leave your house. They are pharmacy, pharmacy slash doctor, supermarket, walking your dog or other animal, which other people have done. You might have seen some videos. Um, helping somebody in need. Uh-huh. What are the other two reasons? Oh, one is like to go to a funeral specific. And then working out like exercise. Oh, right. And exercise. Exercise indoors or like outdoors? You no, can they, outdoors. Outdoors. So you can walk to go outdoors for so like if you're going for a run, run for a walk, and all that so on stuff. and so forth. So before you do any of that, you have to text the government one of those digits. It's a one to six. Wow. And your name and your address. And if you don't do that, you're subject to a 300 euro fine. If the cops oh. stop you, you either haven't sent the text message or you sent them a false text message or whatnot. Right. You get a 300 euro fine. For those listening at home that are not aware of the uh, wage range in Greece. 300 euros is a lot of 300 money. 300 euros is a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Lot of probably euros, like 700 euros is probably the, the average uh, minimum wage monthly is, wage. Minimum wage monthly is 545 euros. So 300 wow. euros is a pretty penny. Oh. So you can't pass around. More than half of your a monthly minimum monthly yeah. wage. It's more it's than wild. half. That's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it is a lot of money. But to be fair. You guys don't have COVID though. Not that we know of. I'm saying in the country. Yeah, I mean, your numbers oh, yeah, are we have much a lot lower than here. We have a lot of, we probably have more for. No, we don't. For that, New deaths. York has 10,000 cases a day. I think we have more deaths. We have more deaths in the population, which is that's the statistic that's. Well, like percentage wise? Yeah, so the deaths per capita, like deaths per 1,000 yeah. people or whatever. Recently, not overall. In the last few weeks, the deaths per, you know. X Even versus the United States, because it's like yes, 10,000 yes, yes. a day here. The U.S. Yeah, I think it's that's per. No, if, if the U.S. has yeah, I don't think it's so like, the the U.S. Te, the U.S. has thirty times the people. Yeah, all right. What's that? What's that percentage? We have a hundred a day. You have three thousand a day. We're battling basically. Not right, battling. right. Same yeah. same garbage. Yeah, New York, America has a lot more like cases. Yeah, because America, doesn't, America doesn't, doesn't give a fuck. No, no, that's because America does a lot more testing also. So testing is important. So I I thought America Greece doesn't care. Gave, I thought Greece gave a fuck until I came here. They give a fuck because of the three hundred euro fine. Yeah, Greeks. Yeah, I mean, you have to incentivize people to not do that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's but what it is. So I thought that everybody had this, like, all right, let's let's be serious about this. It's not the case, no right? Fuck. Yeah, no. no if it's, if there's no fine, you're gonna go out and well, get even, COVID even and get COVID. Yeah, what do you say? The main thing that's like discouraging people from spreading this virus further is the fine, and the fines we don't treat as like. Oh, good job, government. That's a smart policy. We're like, all right, how are we going to get around this fine? So you can understand in the first week of the second lockdown, when it was, again, the texting, texting to leave the house, from eight, from nine to 12, so we had a midnight curfew, from nine to 12, one million text messages were sent to exercise. Greece is a population yeah. of 10 million people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One million people yeah. extra. So either the next Olympics, we're killing it. <laughs> right, right. Like we're demolishing the competition. Tokyo 2021. Yeah, or you know, we're just spreading the Rona. Yikes! What, yeah. are, what are people getting? Greece people get money in Greece. Oh, uh, we got at some point in my. I don't think we get any more money now. We got like six hundred. We're gonna bring in our Greek correspondence. Yeah, yeah we have Greek correspondence here. <laughs> yeah, but they can't speak Greek, unfortunately. No, no, don't worry. We're gonna. We got it. Because I, no, I don't even understand Greek. At the at the initial stage of um the lockdown, where everything got. So unemployed people got paid and companies got loans to pay their employees. So if you were like, a, like in America, yeah, like the the restaurant shut down. But the thing is, a lot of the Greek economy is black market. Right. A lot of Greek money is off the books. So not all readers right. are registered and yeah. insured and all that. So there were a lot of people who were expecting a wage. But because it was not, a, you know, a taxed properly. Right. Yeah. It's not going to be exactly what they make a week or whatever. They didn't get anything, basically. Well, actually, they probably were registered as unemployed, but that was like a iffy subject. And now, but we haven't gotten. I don't think it's been as uh, as much as America. America just America gave me money. Yeah, I know. James, America, James, 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 and Amanda, what are your thoughts of uh, shutting down indoor dining and all this uh, situation? In New York, it's fucking stupid. Yeah, I, I mean, if you see it. like the 
if you see like the COVID uh, contact tracing, yeah, if you look at the numbers, numbers, it's like indoor dining was at one, two percent, whereas everybody, you know, OK, great. We can't go to indoor dining. We can't go to a bar. I'm just going to go to whoever's house. Yeah, I'm just it's like one and a half percent indoor dining supposedly is from the contact tracing, like where people are getting it. And like 75 percent is people's houses, gatherings, all that shit. Yeah. If it's so really 1.5 percent, like what's the point of fucking totally debilitating another uh, restaurant another business, industry. which stinks already? Yeah. I also worry about people lying about what they've done. Right. Because they're like, they don't want to fucking admit that they went out to lunch or brunch. Well, the restaurants, I mean, if it was at 25% capacity. It wasn't open completely indoors. So, yeah. like, I don't see how, you know, it wasn't like a restaurant was filled to like over 50% because they were going to get fined. They got fined. Restaurants got shut down and stuff. They were there any events where restaurants served as like clear super spreaders? We're like on this Tuesday, November 9th. No, no, not, not like, that. I, not that's been I haven't reported. seen anything about that. Um, so I want to quickly interrupt to say that this is another fundamental difference I've noticed between America and Greece. Y'all know so many more numbers. You guys know the percentages of transmission within a certain sector. You know what it is? I think it's just because uh, we live in New York. Yeah. I, I wouldn't more, be surprised. We're if more he... lefty and... um. Like they give out numbers. Yeah, they don't I mean, give I wouldn't be surprised if people in like Middle America wouldn't really the, understand those numbers or get those numbers right. readily. At the same but somebody, time, my, my, my mom was telling me something about that. Like the, the rates of transmission in schools are 0.3 percent. But yeah, they have it broken down. Like the New York data has no it broken idea. down. Con, like concern, like about what the contact tracers get. Yeah. And I think like if I was in America, the type of person I am, I would know that. But in Greece, right. I have no idea. Like my well, dad tells me also. The, there's a problem though, because like New York State Cuomo has a set of numbers, and then New York City with the Blasio has they have different numbers. They're similar, but they're not exactly the same. Which means there's a lack of communication between them two because what they hate each other probably. Yeah. Between so the like, Blasio and Cuomo. Yeah. The Blasio and Cuomo hate each yeah, other. Yeah, they, no, no, well, they might hate each other. That makes sense. They're both like trying to be like superheroes right now, but their numbers don't agree with each other. The New York City numbers are a little bit different than like the New York state numbers for New York city. It's crazy. It makes no sense. There's no coordination between them. And that's the problem with every state. Like some states are taking it seriously. Some aren't. You could call it a red, red or blue, blue thing. I mean, it is what it is. Red and blue, I just said is it, it red yeah. and blue? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. They don't yeah. give a fuck. And I, I get it. It's annoying, right? It sucks. Like I had a restaurant and my restaurant barely made it when it was normal. So now if you have a restaurant and you just got, you know, a $40,000 PPP thing eight months ago or six months ago, whenever it's been like, that's gone now, you know, your business has completely changed. You probably have not paid rent. Cause I know if I was sold in the restaurant, the minute COVID shut down everything, I'm calling my landlord and I'm telling them, bro, you're not getting rent. I was going to ask, were rents, were rents reduced at all? Rents in Greece have been reduced. From like the, the government that hey you need to shut you need to yeah, government yeah, mandated that rents yeah no it's we did the rent. moratorium of evictions and stuff like that for both Palala, that's something for both residential and commercial that's ending they're negotiating it now to extend it because you know like big landlords are getting ready to just drop the hammer on people that aren't paying rent because supposedly a lot of people are back in rent but what I would have what I would have done is gone to my landlord and be like bro. I can't get anybody in here. It's all deliveries now and pickups. I'm not paying $7,000 a month rent. I'm going to pay $2,000. And if you have a problem like me, if you want to take it to like game it out, basically how that conversation would go, he said he would say no or like, oh, I want five grand. I'd be like, listen, I can pay you zero. There's going to be a moratorium probably for the indefinite future, probably yeah. a year. Yeah. And then after when it's back, courts are going to be clogged up. So you have to wait another year and you're not going to get yeah. rent for two years. Right. If so what restaurant want to play what, it. Yeah. What restaurant's going to come open and, and do that now? Right. Yeah, exactly. Like whoever's opened up a restaurant now, scratch the fucking maniac, like a maniac. Just go to the casino and fucking play, like play any game you want. Go play crap right. with it. Basically, like you have. OK, like you said, if you if you were in the situation, you could say that, hey, you're not going to find anybody else. I can get shot. zero. Or in a pandemic, who's gonna rent your shit? Even exactly. If right. So you had you had a lot of like power in your hands. 
basically here they didn't even want you to have to exercise that power. I mean, that's like, smart because they actually see how it's going to play out, right? Like over here, because it's so like capitalist and like, I mean, not that it's a bad thing that it's capitalist, right? Not but that like, here we're that not like we're not. Capitalist. They just need to see things logically and they don't behind the guise of like making money and let the, like they say let the market decide but like this is the most fucking social fucking country in the world like banks start fucking dying out and we pay bank we you know bail out banks the second they ask it when the stock market went to shit the fed printed four trillion dollars for the stock market to stay stay afloat the stock market's artificially inflated because there's four trillion dollars pumped into it and they have such fucking issues with like giving normal people and actual small retail businesses money. They did the PPP. There's still 455 billion left over in the first PPP that's much, sitting in an account. Much, 455 billion out of like the, it was like two trillion. How much is that per person in America? Amanda, can you do some quick math? I think it's like 1,300 bucks. It's like 1,500 bucks. Something like, something like that. that. But that was for the, for the small businesses. It was like earmarked for the small businesses. That a right. lot of like most of them got their money and like they don't give a fuck. People got a twelve hundred dollar check and they got the extra six hundred for the uh, unemployment. Oh, shit. What the fuck is that going to do? After yeah, six bro. Months? what are you going to do? There's mad people that are behind on rent like they should have stopped um, mortgages, like froze mortgages and froze rent. Like, don't put it on the landlord, too. I'm not saying, oh, fuck the landlords because. There are, and not every landlord's rich. Like you buy a, a building here in New York. Let's say you bought something last yeah, five bro, years. Like me and my brother, we yeah. have a we have a yeah. small building. We were... imagine like imagine if we didn't get rent, we're fucked. Right, because you have a huge mortgage. It's not like you got it thirty years ago and it's for no money, and now it's worth thirty times the price that you paid for it, and you're good. You're rich. You know, landlords, they're small businesses owners too. Like if you really think about it. So I don't know. It's just like the lack of giving a fuck about people is is ridiculous. It's Listen, like a I joke. Think, I think but that's yeah. why I think that's why the stock market is so high because it's all these corporations that are making money off the fact that people aren't able to spend money at their local shops. They have right. to order on Walmart, on Amazon, on all these on all these websites. So those companies are gonna obviously do better. Listen, yeah. I I think that and it's we're, fake too. Kala, right. That's a, that's a, yeah. I think we're framing the argument wrong. I think that. Proof that you care about people is making policies such that the debts of COVID are as limited as possible within reason, right? Sure. Because with every showing the law that to protect people, there, there's a reason speed limits aren't 15 miles per hour, right? 15 miles per hour wouldn't kill anybody, but you have to allow for some death. Unfortunately, Listen, if you're going to like we didn't do because we didn't act uniformly, like every state did their own thing. Every region That's the biggest problem. Was, was state to tr state travel like completely open yeah. even though yeah. they were different they kept saying that there were checkpoints i've been going back and forth between like jersey and whatnot and what are you doing in jersey man what are you doing over there wouldn't you like to know uh -huh. and um yeah no the, and they say oh yeah if you're coming in from another state quarantine for 14 days but no one's gonna there's yeah, no way check. to check that yeah and, and then mean, you have to the only get caught you can't check it's right like, that's you have the attitude of people if you're a small business owner and you're getting your dick pushed in for the last nine months, I get it. Like, I totally understand your frustration and shit, especially when you see the 1.5% thing where it doesn't really matter. Like, it's it's a it's nominal percentage, percentage. like, oh, right, in terms the of the contact tracing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that anger and shit, like, and it makes no sense at all. But then you have the other people who, like, use that argument as to make their own argument about, like, government overreach or, like, I want to be able to do this. I want the freedom to do that. Those people who, let's be honest, are like most of them are rich and are really not affected by this. Um, they're just I don't know if most of them are rich. I think there are a lot of people who are rich who are making well, the ones that are saying that they say, I want the freedom to do this, it's my freedom. If I've it's my choice if I want to get COVID and stuff and spread it to the older people in my family, and you think those people are rich? I don't they're know, either like rich or idiots, they're either rich or they're fucking stupid. It's, or they're listening to somebody who is rich, which is also very like what that which, which goes makes with the you stupidity. stupid. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if everyone who says that I think that you just got to think about it logically, right? Like if you're telling places to close down, businesses to close down, and people to become like get be unemployed, you need to pay them. Yeah, you need. You we need, need to fucking stimulus. put a bridge. Like it's a bridge, right? We got the vaccine. It's coming. It's going to be available everywhere in months. There's a fucking light. There's light at the end of the tunnel, right? 
We're right there. We just need a little, a little fucking bridge to get us over there, over the hump. And we're past this. It's a bad fucking memory. And like just the way people are reacting to it, like saying some people saying it's fake and it's just like the flu, like it's not. It's just it's the dunce. denial that I don't understand. It's the outright denial. So I was thinking about this um, the other day is that. So like you can if people are starting to like espouse ridiculous theories about, you know, coronavirus or how the election happened or whatever. What shocks me and what I can't understand is their willingness to jump and bandwagon onto some absurd right. theory. They're so down to accept anything without any proof. But the one that there's the most proof for, they're like, well, that's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, no, yeah. it's a setup. No way. <laughs> like, that's right. the thing about it. It's not that you, you can just prove their specific conspiracy theory, but somebody who's going to like believe in a lot of conspiracy theories, all right, they're going to find another one. Like, you know, sure. yeah. I, I saw people posting that it was a democratic ploy to undermine Trump. And I saw that it was a Chinese ploy to undermine America. The fact that the people who believe the first one were the most likely to believe the second one. It's like, why do you so quickly well, believe it's only just because it's a vow another theory, but cannot believe it like, into their person. narrative, bro. That's what it is. What's that narrative? Well, I that mean, you listen, just, you're talking about the, for the election. I mean, their narrative was for just election for COVID, I think this, I think largely by and large, the people who were believing in like the absurd conspiracy theories. Are the people the same people? I like it's a divide in America, man. It's well, is it is it the divide in America? America? It definitely is it falls into that line. In conspiracy. Sorry, it definitely falls into the divide, like right and left, kinda. But you do have this extreme section of the right that, you know, they're out to fucking lunch. Like they don't know what the fuck they're talking about, and they grab onto anything that can make their point, even though if you dig not even deep, you just say one thing in rebuttal to them that makes any sort of like sense their argument falls apart but they're yeah. so cognitively but, that, but that's the thing that is it don't, i don't know if i don't know if it's rooted in their commitment to that argument or it's rooted in their just like declared i feel like it's more rooted of like i'm like going to reject there. any system provided explanation so i'm going to look for other explanations cuz that's the thing like the people i guarantee if they were you know i don't know 2 million people who believed in the china made the coronavirus Right. Yeah. And then a month later, it was like Democrats created the coronavirus. Right. There's a lot of overlap between those two million. So basically, they're immediately saying our old theory is bullshit. Turns out it's this new thing. Right. And they're so quick to jump on a new one and so quick to disavow one that they were, you know, rah, rah, rah. This is what's going on. So I don't know if it's, it has anything to do with their belief in a conspiracy theory or if it has to do with their just like complete rejection of systemic, ex, you know, explanations from it. the system. Yeah. I think so like, um, you become in, like you could just it's like a cult bro you, and you're like a, if you're like a religious zealot you know somebody can explain to you science and it's right there on paper proven by mathematics and like you don't even need to be a fucking mathematician to get it like you're not going to believe it because it's just cognitive dissonance you're just you're detached from logic and reason and you want your narrative and what you believe to be right so, but to oh, those people, what? so let's say, I mean, ideally, I would imagine we'd like to get those people to not believe these things because it's literally dangerous as we've right. learned now over the last period of time when so many people died of this because there were so many people believing that it wasn't a real thing or beforehand with, you know, Charlottesville rather people died and stuff like that because yeah. of people believing in things that just aren't the case. Is it, do you, I mean, clearly the point is not to disprove the conspiracy since they'll jump on any conspiracy. Right. How the fuck do you get people to just accept that maybe this time the system might not be lying to you? Right. Like, that's know. the issue. I feel like that's the like, question of the ages. Question of the day. For, for sure. Which, that was another thing. Yorgo and I were talking about the elections when they were first happening. Which, you know what the craziest possible outcome you guys would be? Voted? The elections? Did you vote? Ah, is, are our parents going to watch this? Probably. I'm putting it out, so fantastic and um, so we started the paperwork we did not complete the paperwork so no our votes were not cast you're horrible americans and in terms of True full disclosure cast. my vote True was also cast. not cast in the 2016 election even though i had filled out the paperwork and the town i lived in was about 25 square feet so i could have gone to the post office like on my way to the bathroom right right <laughs> yeah yo it's listen i mean I understand the appeal to civic duty and the whole, you know, like fundamentally like everyone should vote. Yeah, I voted in every election that's right. And I'm like I came 
all the way to Mithilin. You don't have to fucking from. qualify. Yeah, guys. whatever. I mean, no, no, but I, I think you guys are pieces I, of shit. It's fine. Right. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> right. So we're pieces of shit. Right. Fair. But I think fair. What is in, I think that it's first of all, and I'm not trying to justify our behavior. I think that it's very valid to regard us as pieces of shit for not yeah, voting. Relax. You're not, he's relax. It was a joke. Thank you, Amanda. So, um, I mean, think about this, not, right? Mad people voted like most ever. It's like a 67 yeah, percent turnout, turnout, which is insane. Bananas. But think Bananas. about like that. That means 155 votes, million people voted, and that's 67 percent turnout. What's the yeah. other 33 percent? How much? How many more millions is that that didn't vote? At an election right. at a time where it's so polarizing, so like in your face, kind of everything's going to shit. This year's been so bad, and yeah. that. You know, it's been made easy. It was made easy. You can mail in your vote now. Like it was super fucking easy. That's why the turnout was so much. What was the process? It wasn't as easy as you think. I want to hear what the process was for you guys. Yeah, you guys are in another country. Yeah. What was the process within America? What it like? What is the mail? I mean, for us, well, first of all, the board of electors uh, got the envelopes wrong. So yeah, they fucked up. A hundred thousand people. What? What? Don't curse. No, don't talk about. How it was fraudulent. Yeah, don't don't be. No, they fixed it. They fixed it. It was fine. Amanda, did you get a military ballot, Amanda? Do I remember correctly? No, I did not get. I just got somebody else's like envelope. The ballot was right. The envelope was. Yeah, everyone got that. Everyone got a different name on the envelope. A hundred thousand New Yorkers got that, but they fixed it. They made sure to count one vote for each person, so it like I don't know. They worked it out, but it was that was shit show. But otherwise, it was fine. I mean, the the. Write-in ballots were really easy. I was really lucky that what our we polling did, place was, was Fort Hamilton, so I just did, dropped my thing ro- off. We wrote them out. You, you had to drop it off manually? We dropped it off. You could have mailed we it. We dropped it off just because, like I said, I, I was at work already. It so was I just five blocks away. It was right there. Went downstairs. and Was the mailing, off. but mailing was at no expense, I imagine. Like, it was free to mail it? Yeah. I don't know if they gave you free postage It was. Or it was free posted on the I can't thing. imagine getting charged to vote. I feel like that's very kind. Yeah, so, like, they made it relatively simple, dude. For people, yeah, I mean, well, that's probably I why I hate the state, obviously, because yeah, I mean, who knows what happens because the, the fact is, Republicans in different states make it harder for people to vote because they know that more turnout means less Republicans get elected. It's the simple fucking yo, thing. which is bananas. Like, that's the hardest part about explaining this election to people here because, like, I oh, forget it. It's a fucking years. shit show. Oh, yeah, when they're like, yo, a lot more people voted for one guy than the other, why isn't he present? You're like, well. So right, got this thing called the electoral. Like, yeah, this like, bullshit. This right. thing that started, and, and I don't I, see I, what I, aspect of it is democratic. Like I was talking to Christo about it. And Christo sees some merit in the electoral college, and he makes a lot of valid points about it. But like on the face of it, how is it possible for more of us to think this person should be president? But the system we wrote in 1796, whenever it was. I, yeah, like, I follow no. this guy. He's like a pollster guy, right? And he gives like. He does like the election to a team. Nate Silver? No, this other guy, Wasserman, David Wasserman, is on, on Twitter. And um, he said, he's like, what ended up happening this year, this time was Biden won by 7.1 million votes overall. And he won the Electoral College 306 to 232 or whatever it was mm-hmm. by a combination of 66,000 votes over like three states. So it would have been possible for. Biden to win the popular vote by like over six million votes, and he could have lost. Could have lost. That's why. Yeah, do you really have six, 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 six thousand million people? Is nothing. Yeah, no, it's fucking crazy. That's, it's it's a, wild. It's crazy. Like, Bay Ridge probably sixty six thousand yeah. one hundred fifty five million voted. What's that percentage even? Yo, that's crazy. Bananas. It's infinitesimally small, bro. That's that's yo. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. Yeah, it's nuts. That, that's. And that's, that's like the, this, the LS World College system, while the intentions are great, like why do you know why outdated. it actually is the way like why what was the thought process? I'm gonna be honest, I don't, and she's really bad because I teach it. Supposedly guys, I teach world history. Supposedly okay? it's to give an equal amount of power to states that don't have a huge population. So like to get it's a decentralized. Can we talk about the fact that that's uh, bullshit? It's along the same lines of like why 20, each state. Let's say 20 million people live in California. I don't know what the number is. Uh, probably much more than, more that. than that. 30 million people live in New York. Yeah, I think it's like close to 40 million. Like, why the fuck I might be wrong. should West Virginia count more than the 30 million people who live in well, New York? Well, like they, they, I, they, they explain it in a certain way where like their electoral college votes are worth more. 
they count for much more. Technically, like, yeah. Like, you think like, 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 of like of Montana votes for like, you know, I don't know, 500,000 right. people. Each elector of New York state votes for like a million and a half. Well, they think like the Senate has two senators from each state. Right. Reasonable agreement. Well done. But Wyoming or like, like Montana, like you said, Montana, who I think they have like 700,000 people that live there. Montana's like, Montana like, like six city blocks. So like if you, if the senator there, like your vote in Montana or Wyoming has a bigger say than your vote in Cali or New York or yeah. Illinois or right. Texas even. What's that about? Like why, why on earth, besides the fact that like inertia, that's what it is so far. Like, I don't understand how we can look at that now and justify it. Like, why? You know, it makes no sense. Somebody Electoral in college makes no sense. Right. So, like, why Stupid. Do yeah, something? it's a very and, outdated system. I don't know. It's worrisome that something that's so obvious. And the like, talking, you want to hear the talking point Republicans use? Because Republicans don't want anyone to vote. They want to be the fucking obviously. kings of the yeah. fucking They want to rule the world. Yeah, 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 and yeah, do yeah, whatever yeah. they can for their big business, big, uh, big business overlords. So, this one clown, this guy's named David Crenshaw. He's a congressman out of Texas. He's a former Navy SEAL, but he's a fucking clown. The guy with the eye, eye patch, yeah. He said the reason for the electoral college is so the fifty-one percent doesn't tell the doesn't totally rule over the forty-nine percent. But the oh, problem yeah. with that stupid fucking fortune cookie bite-sized bullshit is so the forty-nine percent can tell what the tell right. like one percent what to do. Yeah, like we're red giving- and it. it, it Right. It agrees with so you, like, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of giving the fifty-one percent the say over the forty-nine percent, we're basically increasing the chances that the forty-nine percent gets the say over the fifty-one percent. Yeah, it's truly like amazing, and I'm sure in like centuries or tw- decades from now, they're gonna look back and be like, "What Lather the Republicans have done in the last like thirty years since like Reagan? It's pretty impressive how like they've gotten to so much power and gotten elected so many times, and have actively." done nothing for people have done yeah. thing and how people have voted for them when they actively work against their interests like regular middle class yeah. poor people vote republican mississippi republican through and through it's the poorest fucking state in, this, in the whole country and they vote red meanwhile right. like obamacare and like social programs and medicare for all would benefit them by far and away more they love to complain than it would benefit a richer state. It, yeah. So I so I had seen this thing that it's it makes a very big difference as to whether or not you agree to vote to increase the minimum wage. The the, the very like the most deciding factor is whether or not this increase in the minimum wage will increase your wage. Because if it increases your wage, suddenly you're making minimum wage. Whereas right. before you weren't making minimum. So even though you're economically better off like strictly mathematically if you look at it you are better off you have more money in your pocket with more sure. buying power. people who let's say we're making nine bucks a month nine bucks an hour sorry when other people are making 750 if you say raise the minimum wage to 10 they're like fuck that because all of a sudden they're the bottom whereas before yeah. they had somebody else to look down on right so it's got to do with that but i i, I you know what's what interesting saying. like if you look at like denmark and shit um they don't even have a minimum wage and McDonald's workers there make three times the national average here, which like the national minimum wage here. They is don't have a minimum wage. No, no, they don't have a stated like this is the number that like New York now, New York State, the minimum wage for the last couple of years is fifteen, 15 bucks an hour. Yeah. Does so, that like, have like much more union power? Or yeah, something? yeah, they or collectively bargain does. shit better. I mean, but still, McDonald's is operating there. There's McDonald's is still the behemoth that it's always going to be, and they make money and they pay people three times the amount that they pay them in America at McDonald's. Is it three minimum times? Minimum wage like is tricky, bro. I own the restaurant, better. right? Minimum wage is so tricky. Because what happens in a restaurant specifically, a sh- little sh- little shit restaurant on the corner, you have cooks, you have dishwashers, you have delivery guys, you have servers. You got to pay your dishwasher 15 bucks an hour. That dishwasher goes on deliveries, gets tips from deliveries. That's your cook. That's is, right. Your cook is getting paid, you know, 17 an hour, 18 an hour, maybe. You need to start paying that. I mean, your cooks are uh, of skilled labor. It is. You know what I mean? Like, not everybody can cook. So you need to pay them more. So when you're paying your dishwasher's 15, you got to start paying your cook who you're paying 16, 17, 18, 20 around. 19, 20. They need to be significantly bumped up. 
So what happens? How does a little mom and pop shop, not McDonald's, not a national food chain survive? The only way you do it is by raising your prices. And what does that do? That affects everybody. That affects the person getting the minimum wage when he goes out or she goes out to eat. That affects the regular, you know, Joe Blow customer. I mean, my restaurant was in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Liberal, and I'm not I'm not saying disparaging liberal because I'm definitely a lefty. I hate Republicans. But you know, some facts are facts. Like you would you'd be like, hey, I have to raise my burger price to a, a quality burger, right? It was a good burger to whatever it is it now. Is. From from twelve, is, from 12 to thirteen to seventeen now because I'm I have my it's not because I'm banking it. And people complain. You know, like so it's tricky because how do those small businesses make it past that point that hurt point sure. because like everyone think- says about mcdonald's be like the minimum wage with mcdonald's and i used it too just now but the difference between mcdonald's and you know jimbo's restaurant is mcdonald's makes 25 billion dollars a year gross they make like five or six billion profit they can afford one to two billion dollars a year in development and automation and within three to five years, they're automated. So their restaurant want, had 15 people that, working. Though? Yeah, their restaurant that had 15 people working in it now is going to have five people working in it because the rest of it's automated. And in the long term, big businesses and big restaurant chains like that will make more money because they're working. But do you want Do you want to encourage that? As a, if you're the government and you're making policy, yeah, you want to because you're telling me that okay, minimum wage in the short term will increase the amount of profits that's going to labor and will slightly hurt It's going to hurt people. small business. That's what I worry about. It's definitely going to hurt small business, business, but it's also going to encourage large business to increase automation. Yeah, that's but something that small really businesses need. can't afford that development or buying those kinds of equipment. Like how, how long yeah. is it going to take until those, you know, the burger right. maker right, okay. is available so large for commercial use? Be able to bounce back from it faster because they can order 50,000 burger yeah, makers. Yeah, they, have, they have the money to be able to be like, all right, we're going to spend a billion bucks this year to make a machine that makes burgers itself. So that takes yeah. our workforce from five guys down to three. Right. And it's well, worth a million because it saves us 800,000 a year. But the law, they can invest in things like that. Regular Joe Schmo restaurants, they can't fucking invest in anything, bro. You're making it month to month, quarter to quarter. You're fucking stressing every quarter when the sales tax, you got to give sales tax. It's not easy. At can all. I tell you something though, that I, that I might be a controversial opinion in the restaurant space. Tipping is bullshit. Tipping is great. The fact that I have to do math after having a burger is that to make sure that your waiter, the, the person you employ doesn't go home Crazy. poor. Well, servers, think about it. Like they're getting it in the, in the taint right now, but like servers make the most money. Like a server right, in a busy restaurant. Like I'm not saying I'm not saying that servers don't make a lot. And well, yeah, a bad that. thing. Like getting someone who doesn't like getting kicked in the taint. That's what it is. Not not right. the person who does like it. But I just think it's bullshit towards the customer that I'm expected to calculate this certain amount of your costs that you haven't calculated for. Yeah, and that you're allowed to pay three bucks, four bucks an hour, like that. Well, it's not three bucks, I four bucks. Like, why, you know, the fact that I look on the menu. Oh, wait. In New York, it's ten fifty an hour for a server, and they get tips. Yeah, yeah. like that's a lot of garbage. To Think me. about they it. Get in New York, minimum wage or higher. That's fine. The I national get that. minimum wage is seven twenty five an hour. It's been like that since two thousand and nine. Okay. In that's New York, crazy. the server minimum wage, where you're going to make you know probably triple that in an hour, is ten dollars and fifty cents. It's fucking crazy. You think it'd be okay on the whole, not just for small business owners, not just for customers, not just for everybody, but on the whole, do you think it'd be more reasonable and like fair for it to just be, hey, when you see a price on a menu, that's yeah. the price you're gonna pay for this burger? Like no extra sales tax, no tip. Sales tax, I also think is bullshit. But I think yeah. sales tax should exist. But I think it should be. I think yo, when I if I look at a burger, if I go to Bonnie's or XYZ. And I see it's Jimbo's, not Bonnie's. Oh, you can go Bonnie's. Bonnie's still around. Go check it out. It's in Park Slope. I've been many times. And I see $17 for a hamburger. And I take out my wallet and I have $17. And that's not enough for me to eat. That's yeah. crazy. Yo. Where else does that happen? I don't know. I, maybe, it's, maybe it's just New York's too expensive. Like, like, no, I, don't think too, I think, that, I think that's like a specific thing that's done to increase consumption. Because like, right. I'm just going to get it as cheaper. But right. like, I think on the whole... And like, yes, if you increase consumption, you're going to help small and large businesses. On the whole, 
Because like you might be a small business owner. Amanda might be a vice president of McDonald's and work at a large corporation. Yeah. We're all consumers. Sure. Shouldn't we be, I feel like the reasonable thing towards everybody and the sort of equitable, honest, like transparent thing is, hey, a burger costs $17, period. What? Cross the line? No, 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 no. I'm not oh, saying that. No. Like, oh, so no dating. extra stuff. He's saying that. Right, yeah. Yo, here's the menu price. And what he's paying. Menu he's, price he's is not just menu price. It. Yeah. yeah, menu price shouldn't be different from. And you're saying they like phase out tipping, basically, like the expectation. Yeah, I, don't think, I think tipping, tipping to me seems bananas. Do they tip in Greece? What's the Greece? No, very little. Like delivery. Really like if you give if you give a delivery guy two euros, it's like he, he, he assumes you made a mistake. Yeah. First step, and then he wonders if you know, are you running drugs from this house? <laughs> If there's something I saw that I shouldn't have seen, but yeah, what, yeah, yeah. Got you. it's a hush money so, payment. Like what the fuck's yeah. going on? Exactly. It's like what the fuck are you giving? I remember the first time I realized that in some countries they don't tip, and I was yeah, I think a lot of Europe, bro. Fantastic. Most of Europe, yeah. I, I was 19 in London, and they were like, "Tip what?" what yeah, right. and I we went to, to like, London in 2016, and we tipped 20 percent on a dinner, and the guy, the, the lady was like, "What the fuck?" Well, that's yeah, bro. Everywhere else in the world, that's why they're so hyped to have American customers. Like, granted, right. Americans like, fucking myself, idiots give away money, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're idiots. We're annoying. We're fat. We take up a lot. Not wrong. They are not right, wrong. and we like you know we ask for bacon on stuff, but yeah, we tip like motherfuckers, and they're like, "Yo, what are you doing?" And we're like, "No, no, 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 no." You said the burger's twenty, so obviously it's twenty five, and they're like, "You don't realize you're ridiculous." Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, what the fuck? Oh. It says twenty over here. I'm paying. Yeah. What the fuck is that? Like, hello. Exactly. Like, you said twenty. I paid twenty five. That's how society works. And they're like, "Why the fuck would society I think it's work just that conditioning? Way? We're just conditioned here. It's our culture. Right. It's, it's yo. I worked as a waiter at Abli. I worked at a waiter as an, at another place. If I ever got less than fifteen percent, I was like, "Yeah, did I spit in this yeah. person's face?" Well, that's a difference. Let's say you phased out tipping, right? Which, like, some bigger restaurant groups have done, like that guy Danny, Danny Meyer, Meyer did that. Yeah, huh? yeah. You have to pay your servers more, yeah. right? You, which you should. Yo, why don't I don't I pay agree. you a third charge for your chicken? But cost. then you need but to look at this. Your product now, has to. No, well, the price is going to go up. Yeah, right. But the price is already going up. Just you're yeah, not regardless, right? Me. Yeah, it's just right. it's just, it's gonna go up regardless. So like, it, yeah. but you're being honest with me that hey, you're gonna pay more for this burger because right. now, basically, you're not being honest. You tell me, hey, burgers twenty bucks, but if I don't leave twenty five bucks, I'm an asshole. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about with the restaurant shit, and uh, is like the seamless grub hubs, all the delivery right. platforms, right? They've lowered their fees from the pandemic, but they're just waiting for this thing to be over so they can jump them back up again. Yeah, I'm sure they're also like raking in money by the hell. Here. Oh, they really yeah. are. Especially sure now that people happen. are not doing indoor dining. You know, so right. many people are ordering on sure before, Trump, that et cetera. Too. And I get it. And they're making bank. Right. I get yeah, it. Yeah. It's Which is fine. Yo, they're, listen, they're well positioned. For the convenience. For you pay to not talk to somebody. to just being like online shop, right? You don't talk to them. You want this, you get this, right? I understand. When you order, do you, do you order on platforms like that or do you call? I order on platforms I like that. Platforms but if like I that. know the restaurant that I go to a lot or I eat yeah, at, if you're going to call them. Yeah. If you're I mean, call, like, yo, Tony, what's up? Also, right. like, I'm a restaurant owner. I was a restaurant owner. So, you know, what I did was I raised my prices on Seamless. So, right. And if that's you're what a consumer, lot of- you should know that most likely it's going to be more expensive on there. Yo, rather okay. than calling. Yeah, that doesn't exist. What? Yo, Dimitri, just to randomly connect the two conversations. Yeah. Can you imagine it's if Seamless told you on their site that a burger costs eighteen dollars and expected you to pay twenty one dollars upon arrival? Wouldn't you be like, "What the fuck, Seamless? That's absurd." Yeah, I mean, you kind of get that, thing, but now but Seamless just has when a you're, face. When you're when you're doing Seamless, right? You pick a burger, you pick your fries or whatever. That's a number. Once you go to like the end page, you know it shows you. Uh, you know, the tax. the tax and now what these scumbags do, they lowered the restaurant fees, right? To the restaurants. If you really look on Seamless and Grubhub, it says taxes and fees. They add a fee to the customer now. See what kind of fee of just like, hey, it's a nominal. I'm sure it's a percentage based fee, you know, because it's in the tax. So like sales tax in New York is eight point nine percent to round up. Okay. It's a little bit more than that. That Seamless gets. And they don't, they've never told the customer that. I'm sure they so have like some like, bullshit. Right. But what like, did that you know, start? Our updated that seems like, and you click yes. That seems like bullshit. Like basically, yeah, that's why I'm yeah, trying no to say it. They're scum. You know, everybody should know what they're paying for and how much they are paying for. Because the last it. time I'm part of what you're paying for is the waiters. 
What? And I had never seen it before. It said taxes and fees. And you click like as a question mark. I'm like, what click. is this? Yeah. And it says exactly what. And then you kind of have to do the math for the fee. Like you don't know, you know, if it's something's 15 bucks, you got to pay 9%. You don't know what percentage is well. Like, oh, so the same way you that's a pile of bullshit to you is how other people view the waiter thing where it's yeah, like, no, hey, I understand that this yeah. extra thing. You don't really know. Like basically if we want to believe in capitalism as capitalism is and as capitalism stands, which is a not a great system, but it's probably the best one we've figured right. out so far. Yeah. Basically what should happen is that we should know what we are paying for, how much we are paying for it. Anything besides that is fraud. Yeah, I know, but we, I think we're just conditioned now. Right, but we can uncondition ourselves. That's that's a bunch. What? So we're not salvageable? No, I think moving something in capitalism is like trying to fucking, you know, it's hard. Give me an right? analogy about Yo, something. Every that's law hard. we make, almost all laws we make affect capitalism. Sorry, I'm boring. All law we make, bro. Laws we make are written by capitalists. Yeah. Yeah, we, oh, damn, we're drinking a lot. They're of written by what capitalists. Our laws that are made are written by capitalists, and they're and lobbyists. The, you know what bothers me, bro? I get that. Uh, not, maybe I don't get that they're written by them. What bothers me is that the people who write them are the same people who frame the argument in terms right. of free market versus government. But it's yeah. like, yo, you're part of government. Any free market operates within some rules. Bro, and like the free market, like that's a myth. Right. The, first of all, the free market's... But the free market would mean that you and I can go buy a burger, and if it's cooked under, if it's undercooked, and we die, up, fine, you mean? Like that's garbage. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's anarch. What do they call it? Anarch, anarch, anarch. capitalism. Anarchic capitalism. Yeah, yeah like that if would you be really like believed in total free markets, we'd still have slavery. A, a, a <laughs> you know? would have slavery. You and I would be paving the roads. That bro, the road on Eighty Second Street would have to be a private endeavor. Right. Right. You're gonna, your house is on fire. You better have paid the fire department. I don't know. Right. Or, you ready to shell out, which is pretty much what you do with hospitals. You go to a hospital and you suddenly have to pay, you know, 140000 Over here, yeah. Bro, if I got yeah, COVID right now and, like, ended up in the ICU for 30 days, like, I don't have insurance. Knocking on wood. We're knocking on wood for yeah, you. Yeah, all right. I don't want obviously, right. I would get a bill probably. Like, you know, thankfully I made it through, whatever. I would probably get a bill that's bordering seven figures probably. Right, because if I didn't have, yeah, hundred percent. A guy in fucking Portland, he was on a ventilator for like twenty eight days. He has insurance, but the hospital sent the bill anyway. I guess maybe it was supposed to go to the insurance, but it went to him. It was a million dollars. It was astronomical. I saw that. That's America. One million dollars. One million dollars. Seven figures, bro. Like, there, are, there are things. So, okay, we've touched on a few things already. The electoral college system. The fact that motherfucker paid a million dollars to. Because he got sick during a pandemic. He didn't pay it because he had insurance. Right. Sorry. He got charged. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Imagine not like, what me, a jerk off like me. If that happened yeah. to me, I would get a check from, I would You're get a bill screwed. for a million dollars and I would laugh, obviously, because I'm a maniac. <laughs> and I'd call somebody up just to tell them to go fuck their faces because fuck you. In this country, the richest country, most powerful, all that bullshit, you're giving people million dollar fucking bills. Are you fucking kidding right. me? I remember like when this George split his head open when playing ball. He's got top notch fuck. He's a Bitcoin millionaire. Top notch fucking healthcare, right? Paying big money monthly. He got stitches and he got a four thousand dollar fucking bill. Dude. Fuck no, you. Fuck, fuck your. When state. I went to Vanderbilt, oh, when I went to Vanderbilt, a friend of mine who lived on the. You floor guys got me room. hot now. <laughs> We're by a fire, bro. A friend of mine who went to Vanderbilt, who was on my dorm, touched on them. He got fucked up, you know, consuming alcohol. Shock of the century. And we got nervous because he was like fucked up. So we called the our you know resident whatever, who called up the cops and uh yeah, what's it called an ambulance or sent right. So this is at Vanderbilt, sure. and a Vanderbilt University yeah. medical um, campus yeah. van ambulance came up, picked him up, took him to Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and he was charged like seven grand. Yeah, it's nuts, bro. It's bro, nuts. for like a twelve hundred yard. Ambulance ride. It's crazy. Bro. What? Yeah, you didn't know like, that. Charge. You see, like the line items of if you do a hospital. You got charged for yeah, ambulance. Why? They're crazy. Like I feel like a catheter probably costs thousands. Like it's not enough that you have to have your penis pierced. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a thousand bucks because we couldn't find another way. Like it's fun. Like, all these oh, things. Could carry the kid there. Right. Exactly. And like, but the thing is, like, what does that incentivize us to do? Is that in the future? Don't call your RA. No. You think the kid's fucked up? Don't, don't call your RA. One. Don't call. Don't call an ambulance because he's gonna have to pay seven grand. Right. Hope he gets better. He might die. 
and we have a lot of medicine that would save his life, but he might pay seven grand. So these things that we have, I think to, they're might forced have to, to help you. I'm like, sorry, they can't not help you. You know, in an in a emergency. Right. Yeah. If you are, even if or you're you gonna get insured, charged yeah. for it, you're gonna get hit with a fucking bill that's astronomical. Like, yo, I feel like 95 percent of Americans are reasonable enough to be like, well, that's fucking absurd. Yeah, if you How explain it to them that way, what happens, an that's a fake number. You don't think eighty? You think if I told that story to ninety-five percent, to one hundred percent, all of America, or I grabbed you know a thousand Americans and told them the story, you think that all right? Let's say more than fifteen percent would be like, you think more than fifteen percent would be like, yeah, that's reasonable. Someone should no, have to pay okay. something. Right? No, you think the vast majority would be like, that's fucking nuts. Right? That exactly. Really? It would be like, let's have something else and. What shocks me is that because our politicians can't agree on what the something else is, we're like, well, we can't find something else, so we're gonna keep the shitty old fucking system. I mean, they're trying to gut, any, they're trying to gut fucking Obama, Obamacare too, even though that's a piece of shit. I don't know like, any details think, about Obamacare. Huh? I don't know anything about. I don't know. Well, like they've they took out the individual mandate, which means if you choose not to get health care, you have to pay like a tax at the end of the year. Sure. They got rid of that. Which is what subsidizes the health care. That subsidizes all the health care. And the whole time... These private companies that provide the health care, is there a public option? No. When they passed it, they got rid of that public option before they passed it because the insurance companies were like, we're not playing ball unless you get rid of the public option. And they talk tail and do whatever the fucking insurance company said. Secondly, throughout this whole last year, the Trump administration has been trying to... uh, they're in Supreme Court now. I think they just struck it down uh, to try and get rid of pre-existing conditions. Right? So if you had a pre-existing condition, you can't get covered. And no, then they say, oh, yeah, we have a plan coming. coming. We have a plan coming. Yeah. It's bullshit. You have a plan coming. There was never a plan. Trump's full of shit. He's like five minutes are full away of being out of office. We have a plan coming. So what? And the funny, like you were talking about, like, like reasonable people, if you explain it to them, you know. Not even... Most people I'll give you this. reasonable in Florida, enough. right? Florida, Trump yeah. won Florida. The the big like uh, you win by a lot, not a lot. I mean, four or five points, so it's a decent amount. But the big big underachievement was um, Hispanic, Lat- Latinos, and Latinx people um, voted. Latinx? They voted. Latinx. You don't say Latinos. You say yeah, the, the PC is Latinx. I don't know. Whatever. They Latin voted. Is, they didn't vote. I've ever seen. You don't yeah. say Latinos, you say it's Latinx now. Biden and Harris won them, but didn't win them by what a lot. Real, just, real. Just, 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 just embrace just it, it and move on. <laughs> right. not and so listen, listen. It, I can't hear you, George. They're still just complaining about the. I'm no. I'm not complaining. I'm just trying to understand what's, what's Latinx. Latinx, yeah. Latinx sounds like something you take because you haven't been able to go to yeah, the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. What is Latin? Why is it Latin? What I is this? Guy, I don't know. I don't. Because care. it's like because they if you say Latino, you're uh, insinuating masculinity. Male. If you say or Latina, Latina, you're yeah, saying Latina. you're feminine. And now with all That's of like saying, uh, we can't say man and woman. We should just say person. Human. Person. And not even Which human. You should. Citizen of Earth. You should, Alex. So anyway, listen. The Give majority of people voted for Donald Trump in Florida. In an exit poll, they asked them, do you, uh, do you, what do you call it? Are you for, do you support, fucking brain fought, Medicare for all? 60% support Medicare for all, but they vote for Donald Trump. So, like, that's a little chink in your, like, armor for your, like, people are reasonable. Like, are they, though? <laughs> right. So, like, I don't you, think people you need no, to people give it to a bite sure. size. That's what Republicans are good for. That's what they're good at is giving people bite sized shit. I, no, like I have a freedom. question. Do you think Democrats are good? Like, no, so they're, you fucking said, idiots. Earlier, they're fucking right, idiots. Because you said earlier, like, what has the Republican Party done for you? What the fuck has the Democrats no, it's done? It's all half measures. It's all at the end of the day, they talk tail to big corporations and whatever they say goes. Are they talking tail to big corporations or are they talking tail to compromise and get something passed? That's what they say. That's the, that's their reason. But like, but then again, like Obama, the, the, day, you know, the people that the corporations call the shots, they are our overlords. Okay. They are our oligarchs. Yeah. So in Europe, apparently, I don't know that much, but apparently, like lobbying isn't that much of a thing as much of a thing as it is in America, at least. Sure. But the first major instance of like tremendous amounts of money pouring into Europe for lobbying is now 
with like big tech, like Apple, Amazon, yeah. Facebook, Google, all these people. So that lobbying is just coming around to Europe now. So there's not that much of it. Right. In general, is it the craziest motherfucking thing in the world and that we think is reasonable? Yeah. What do you like mean? People just pay. I mean, what, what do I mean? Basically, we lobby. We allow, policy to, we allow policy to be bought. Oh, we yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're essentially more, corrupt. We're just corrupt. That's right. But like yeah. the thing is, we just legalized corruption and called it lobbying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like back in the day, you had to like bribe somebody to be like, yo. Yeah. We legalized bribery. Yeah. 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 Now we're like, is. we legalized bribery. We legalized exactly. bribery. Period. There's not. I mean. Yeah. yeah. Yo, can you imagine if you were watching some like, I don't know, some movie from the 1800s, obviously not a movie, a movie depicting the 1800s. Sure. And there was a scene where this guy gave a politician $200,000 to vote a certain way on a motion that was being passed in Congress. And someone was like, please describe what you just saw. You would call it bribery. Right. Right. Today, it's called campaign finance. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. I, we have so many things that. Yo, I can't imagine there's a lot of Americans who would find them illogical. Who would be like, yeah, okay. This no, is really we good. need this. It makes sense for us. Yeah. Right, exactly. It would be like, this is democracy in practice. Because the- normal, every day, like the, I think there's 92 million people in America that are underinsured or not insured at all. How many? 92, 92. million that are underinsured or not Over insured at all. Over a quarter. So well, there's, no, there's no special interest or lobbying firm that's going to take them on as clients because no one's paying them to. You know, the insurance company, in their budget, there, there's a line item that says lobbying, right? This is our firm, you know, Sullivan and Sullivan or whoever the fuck. We pay them $10 million a year, and we pay another $50 million to spread out the money towards campaigns and, and, and politicians, left and right, right, to get our way. Or when there's a big law coming up to maybe exclude something that's going to help us make more money. You know, inside of a, like a little loophole. People like me and you, like normal fucking Joes, which the vast majority of us are. It's all everyone's a fucking Yeah, person. like we're not as crazy as this election has made us out to be. Like most people are like reasonable humans, right. like the best thing for their kid. And they like, want affordable, if not affordable, actually free fucking health care. They want to know that yo get it covered. I mean, I, I would I'm stressed if I go to the fucking hospital. I don't want to go. I, I would not go to the hospital if I knew I could kind of don't have to go because I don't want to get a fucking five thousand, even though I'm not going to pay it. Right. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> they can go fuck themselves. I'm not paying it ever. I still don't want to. What do does that. happen if you don't pay a hospital fee? Yeah, you go bankrupt. Forty percent of the bankruptcies, personal bankruptcies in the United States are from medical bills. 40 wild it's 40 damn that's, and like you guys got me hot man to like healthcare you know, is just 40%. basic right yeah it's not a basic Listen, right it should be though right well that's so that's a certain discussion is is healthcare basic right or not yes yeah but i think we can whether You're or not right to live basic, right whether or not listen because healthcare can be, you know, all the way up to plastic surgery so there's there's room for no, debate should, yeah like yeah. elective Health- things different story but like Oh my God, I'm bleeding and this blood won't stop unless I get stitches. Right. I will bleed out. Saving like, your loved one's life should not lead you to bankruptcy. Period. Right. Period. Like it's just, your loved off. one, it's saving yourself. Your saving life. yourself. Anybody. Or, sa- or just like doing something that it's not that, oh, we're going to make it free. So, you know, according to the laws of economics, people are going to abuse it. Like people aren't going to go and fucking get a bunch of appendectomies because it's free all of a sudden. Right. Yeah. Like, Yo, what are you doing to me? I'm getting my appendix removed. You know what? Now. I don't think You're I want that. my appendix anymore. He's yeah, like, exactly. It's not I, I want to lose two. No, no, no. I just, no, want, I just it want it out. I don't need this anymore. Right. right. So, like, that's not going to happen. Like, you know, if I get appendicitis, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Please don't make me bankrupt. You think I want to do this? I, I want to get surgery. rupture in my system? Yeah. It's crazy, bro. It's wild. It's America. There's an earthquake. So we know there's going to be an earthquake there or there's going to be a tsunami. Some of us have to go stand there and take the hit, guys. Like, that's right. Yeah, gonna that's it. Like, oh, natural disasters. You 50,000. Uh, tough luck. Go stand there. Like, it's All right, let's get out of it. Let's get out of the. I know it's fucked. It's All right. Fucked. We're fucked. Favor, you know, talk about something. I'm going to go change my shirt. Really quick. This guy's sweating. Is he OK? Yeah, he's sweating. You guys have got him. Hyped up. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that. How's Greece going? What's going on over there? You look jacked. You're doing steroids. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing a lot of steroids. Oh, yeah. It's over the counter there, right? What? It's over the counter in Greece, steroids. Yeah, it's completely normal, yeah. 
That's why I'm so jacked. What's going on? It's good. We're locked the fuck down. Are you happy with your decision? I'm happy. Besides the lockdown, you're right. The lockdown's yeah, fucked. Lockdown yeah, lockdown. Before but... the lockdown, yeah. But, yo, even before that, I'm not going to lie. Even Greece, bro, you like nothing. It's not the same thing, bro. It's a sure. different type of living. It's like COVID living, but it's nice. I mean, yeah, it's got to be better than here. Much better this than here. This rat race <laughs> bullshit. It's going to snow here too right now. I think it's snowing now. I heard it was going to be bad. Yeah, be like a that's foot. what they're saying. I'm stressed yeah. out. I hate snow. It's going to be six to People eight. People have already hit me up about taking off. What happened? <laughs> People already hit me up about taking off. Because really? Yeah. What time is it right now there? Tennis? What time is it there? I don't know. Three? Three thirty? Three thirty. Ten thirty? Ten thirty. How do I see how long this is going? Or you don't? Uh oh, I don't know. That's a great question. Fuck it, it's fine. I mean we've definitely been on since like two thirty. I need a name for this. I'm thinking the name Daily Talk. It's a good name. The Daily Talk is a good name. Amanda? I'm not mad at it. I'm was, not mad another, at the Daily Taco. Another, I like the we taco. We have all the faith in the world in you, by the way, y'all. Thank you, you I appreciate it. that. Thanks. You I mean, listen, it, I man. have to be polarizing. I can't be middle of the road. A perfect, like, Because, like, no everybody. one's going to give a fuck. That's what he said. You're funny randomly. I'm not trying I, to hype I you I appreciate You're that. Funny. You're just funny. And my I other idea. That. It's Daily Taco. My other idea for the name was Taco Meat. T-A-K-O Meat. The word. No, Daily Taco. Yeah. That's what I'm probably going to end up going with. Because I'm going to slant it towards news and shit like that. And like. Like the things you stuff the taco with is. The meat. Your talking point, you know. Is it daily? It's not daily. I'm going to try daily? and do it. Daily. Try to do daily? I'm going to try and do four a week. And then the fifth one is going to be like an interview. With somebody. Obviously, I'm not going to interview myself. Like your lesbian correspondent? My lesbian correspondent. Lesbian. It's a lesbian it. report. Lesbian. Sponsored by Mega Contracting. <laughs> If you want your contracting, yo, don't tell them we're sending you a check. Don't tell them we're sending you a check. If I'm getting a check, it's definitely sponsored by Mega Contract. I love Mega Contracting. <laughs> All the best. You want your your building done right? Mega, Mega Contract. Contract. <laughs> Use promo code Lesbian. I almost I almost put on a Mega Contracting shirt just you now. Should have, oh, you should have. It would have been perfect timing. Well, my, so actually, the first shirt I pulled out, I swear to God, was Bonnie's Grill. That was my first. Oh, time. you could have rocked that. Oh, oh, I thought cool. about rocking it, but I was like, we just talked about it. Somebody said it was called Jim Bulls, so I don't want to. Well, I just, you know, I'm saying He's average sure Joe Schmo. Right. And then I thought about putting a mega shirt on, and I was like, Dimitri probably already has a sponsorship deal going. We're, we're, we're trying to get we're trying. It's fucking cheap over there. So I went good old That's white. That's why we talk to our people beans. before we do that. <laughs> well, listen, I got you guys. I got the, the son-in-law, too. He's like a major part in this, right? Like, Stalio. Stalio. Oh, Clearview Designs is also. Yo, a make Stella read a page out of like an Ernest Ernest Hemingway book. <laughs> I don't know. And you will get all the hits you ever need. I know. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. know how to read very well. It was funny. He so, was telling me that too. That he was saying something <laughs> to that effect. So I'm like, what are you telling me, Stella? You're fucking illiterate. Like, what are you trying to tell yeah, me? Yeah, yo, he just can't read properly. That seems to it's be hilarious. Great. Yeah. It's great. I mean, it's, it's you guys literally are a comedy. Of, uh, I would pay we for love it. you if we're making fun of you. No, I get oh that, God. but I'm saying people who are like dyslexic and illiterate are gonna listen to this and be like, "I'm a dis- <laughs> I'm dyslexic a little bit." Are you? Yeah, <laughs> little, and I have a little bit of a stutter also. Oh, I have such a stutter. You really? I don't give a fuck. I do. I mean, when it I get depends. tired, Stel's I can't good. Stel's, Stel's fine. Like Stel's have Stel's good. Good. Stel's fine. Stel's got oh, nothing yeah, to I worry know. about. Make him read a page. I'm yeah. not yeah. saying we're gonna upset Stel. Problem. I think he'll be okay. If we made him read a page of like Shakespeare, Shakespeare, like Twelfth Night. Yes. Yo, be, you uh, really should, bro. Yo, a page is yeah. going to take a really long he time. He struggles really hard. Make it like All right, a, a verse. Make okay. it a paragraph. Yeah, 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 like I heard you say yeah. in the beginning, I don't really want to edit. He's, he's Michael don't. Bottom. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> right, he could do that. They're, fr- they're, they're, they're connected with God. Yo, I want you to know when, I, when we were listening to the other podcast where he mentioned, where he believed Amanda, did you hear this? Yo, did you listen to this great. podcast? The one that he believed that uh, I mean, there's a, a what's it called? I don't even know what you're gonna say. Yeah. The, the, the side effect. effect. The side effect. The side effect. The vaccine, vaccine is gonna make you stop forget English and like that. Still believe and that she's she sad that he was like, arm. whoa, really? Yeah, he was, and he's the, like, the no, not really. Not his, like, oh my God. Society has made something I can inject in my arm and learn a new language. <laughs> he was like, oh not my God, speak Greek this is gonna happen to me. Like I'm gonna turn to talk to Tata and be like, Chinese. That's why Trump got whatever million votes, bro. Because he said that. 
Who would, would you have voted for? Because people could believe things like George, that. who Jack would you have voted for? I don't want to. I mean, I want to put you on the spot. You got a lot of like capital Biden. friends. It could have said whatever it was against <laughs> Trump. Bro. I just don't want that guy. He's a bad human like, being. Oh, yeah. you know some people say like Biden might have amnesia. I'm not amnesia. Dementia. But like, dementia. Have, have dementia. I don't Whoa. not believe it necessarily. Bro, you see this? Rather, you see this Biden wireless Biden. mouse? Yeah. Perfectly good wireless mouse. I would have voted for this over fucking <laughs> porn screen. Yo, you know what would be the best thing about the elections if, if it comes out? The best, the, the craziest possible scenario with the elections is that everything Trump has said is true. Could you imagine? Could you imagine no. that there is has been voter fraud? That would that be crazy. Has been working with to that people. level? Yeah. No shot. That would be the most shocking thing. And yet. That would be though, like the pinnacle of 2020. Right. Well, bl- even though that would be the most shocking thing, how many people? 70, you said? 75? How many million? 155 million total voter. No, vote Trump. How many voted for Trump? 74 ish and change. That's a lot of people. Yeah. I know. It's <laughs> a lot of people. You having that it's kind of wild to me that so crazy. many fucking people voted for him. Crazy. I get it. If you're like a crazy evangelical or you're a QAnon guy or crazy conspiracist or you hate Kamala Harris because she's brown or. <laughs> whatever brown. Obama because he was brown and he was the president and they knew him like whatever if you're Did true you blue, that was racist, million people it's fucking crazy to me how like not even for a second probably a lot of them aren't like maybe this guy's a fucking idiot <laughs> but the thing is like what what would it take for them to think that? like I don't know I don't know I don't, know. I don't... Of people have died I, I really do think that Donald Trump could walk out on the streets of New York City Times Square Put a gun to someone's head, shoot he him, agrees. and it would still be fine. He agree- yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, he did, he broke every norm, made yeah. every ridiculous decision, cost people's lives, all these things. And there was no threshold at which the people who voted for him was like, were like, mm, okay, that's enough right. out of this clown. That's the one. No. They yeah, were like, oh, okay, oh, that crossed the line. Grab women by the pussy. Um, Eating? Uh, did you see it, yo? Well, that was elected. that was four years ago, and he still remember when we thought grabbing by the pussy was the worst thing he could say. Yeah, yo, grabbing. I was like, yo, grabbing by the pussy came out. I was like, all right, he's fine. Fucked. He's, he's done. done. He's, he's done. done. Over. This like, guy's serious. He's fucking mic'd up, and he's saying right. this. Like, what is he doing? Yeah, he's done. Yo, but can you imagine if it came out now that Joe Biden had a secret Chinese account that he paid one hundred and fifty thousand dollars more in taxes annually than he did in the U.S.? <laughs> like, what would have happened? And that came out about Trump. That he paid oh, $150,000. Bro, bro. they made a fucking, they made a huge deal. Obama wore a tan suit. <laughs> and right. they yeah. made a fucking expose. There was also the mustard on the burger. Do you remember the mustard right. on the burger? Yeah. That was the just other imagine, Obama a, Just imagine a fucking Obama's a man. rumor about fucking anything. About like, just think about like the most frivolous thing. In the or world, if Obama had a Canadian bank account with if 12 a Democrat did that, Fox News and all these maniacs they would, be would obliterate spikes in the street with like flame and yeah. spikes, you know, like trying to take people's fucking heads off. And meanwhile, yeah, I mean, no one's talking about like the Ukraine shit and the impeachment and stuff. The guy straight up shook down the new Ukrainian president for his political game, right? <laughs> it wasn't shaking him down to. To benefit something in the United America. States interest, right? To like be it was the big his man personal political interest. Everyone heard it. Crazy. If that happened, Obama did that. Do you understand what would be going? Or any Democrat, <laughs> they would be freaking the fuck out. It's funny. Yeah, he just Bob's lowered the, the he's lowered the like. I don't know, the level the like what we expect of a president. Yeah. At oh point, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. We expect nothing. <laughs> that we have bar a is so. Who, it's gone. I want this. Mouse. Exactly. Yeah. President Mouse, bro. Mouse 20. I'm not even joking. Like, I wish I was joking. I'm not joking, bro. I'm not That's joking. Tragic. So That's what do the tragic. Greeks think about Trump? They love him. I'm they love him because they we look like they a joke. They do not love him. They yeah. don't love him. Uh, Nobody loves the him. questions I got in November 2016 Punto were very similar <laughs> to the questions in November 2020, which was, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, how did you guys... What happened? And then you try to explain the electoral college, and they're like, yeah, so you guys it. aren't Their just people that voted for Trump. You've had this system for 240 <laughs> years, yeah, which yeah. gives Montana ridiculous power over who's president. And you're like, right. yeah, but, and then it just it goes down and down. And then the thing is, 
Greece is not, there are a lot of European countries that when they discuss like their governance related to America will like brag about like, hey, we're eco-friendly or a lot of women right. in politics. Greece is not a country that's proud of its politics in any way, shape or form. Greeks, yeah. like, you know how like a lot of Greek Americans in America, like everything's better in Greece. No Greek in Greece has ever said everything. everything is they say everything's in better in Greece because they're there during the summer. Yeah, right, vacation. exactly. Vacation, hoopla, hoopla. And banging like, like a hot guy. Greek guy. Yeah. Right, exactly. You know what but I'm like, saying? You know, like, everything's better in Greece. Shut right. up. But you know how, like, all the, you know, all the bandwagon Bernie Sanders fans were like, fucking Denmark is how much better than us. But, like, they are, though. Logically, a lot of people in Denmark are like, Denmark's all right. But there are some people yeah. in Denmark. Well, they like, understand. They're, they're the norm. Awesome. Yeah, it's normal for them. In Greece, ain't nobody like that. There's nobody being like, we're so good at things. Everyone's <laughs> like, we suck. I don't know how we still survive. <laughs> Politicians are all disgusting. Right. The system is the worst. Yo, yo, they go to, they go, the current president is Mitsotaki, right? Prime and minister. I saw people, prime, prime minister. minister. Prime minister. But, like, people go to the stake when, like, Trump's about to speak, but Greeks are worse. If Mitsotaki's about to speak, everybody's just ready to lay into him. Like, like no matter what he says, they're going to No shoot. matter what he says. Even huh? if you voted for him. Yeah. They're, like, there are very, there is a certain subset of the population that's, like, really, for, first of all, a big difference in Greece and America. Greece does not have two parties. Greece has five parties. It's you, yeah. Right. I'm, the two parties is bananas. But it's not that. Crazy, people, bro. Like. Two parties. Sorry, two parties. Fucking crazy. stupid. Obviously, it's crazy. China's got but, one party. We have two. Wow. <laughs> Sick. I never heard For that. I never heard it put that way. I like that. I like that. All right. But in Greece, we have three parties. So if the if the prime minister comes out and he's going to like say a speech, either on coronavirus or whatever, 70% of the population is ready to jump on him the minute he's making it. And 15% right. who are a lot of them voted for him, my, like myself included. Are also ready to like shit endlessly on this person. Yeah, we have no faith in our politicians. So Yo, it's like the axe is ready. It's like they're going to say ha- Merry Christmas and like the Greeks. Oh yeah, like, ready. <laughs> yeah. What'd you say, bro? Yeah. What'd you say, like, Merry? Fuck Merry. Christmas. If Mitsotaki goes out and says yeah. Merry Christmas, and you know, it's like either. Trump. If Democrats see Trump like ready to say, uh, no, but it's know, much. I just want to wish it for everybody, and they're just like ready with. It. I feel oh. like the difference. Is Trump cares a lot less. Like in Greece, Trump, Trump and Mitsotaki, if two people in the background are not socially distancing. Be like, yo, you put all these rules on us, and your homies right. are like, Trump comes out without a mask, spits in three people's face, and is like, it's gonna oh, go. Trump's like, a nightmare, bro. Trump is like, a nightmare. Come on, yeah, Trump, Trump is just bananas. Yeah. yeah, like I don't know, how to, I can't, can't even. He's not comparable. You like, can't compare like, anybody like all, to Donald like Trump. Like the politicians, I'm sure in Greece are very similar to the politicians here and everywhere else, where they're kind of measured when they speak or try to be measured. Right. Yeah. Oh, there's Trump this doesn't measure is, anything, yeah. bro. There's no measure. Yo, Greece is a funny place. Greece, so let's Greek, not talk about Greece. Bro. Greek politics are epic. Place. But you guys want to talk about what else you got? What else we got about what? Whatever. Oh, whatever. I can just keep talking. <laughs> That's why I told you to invite him. <laughs> but yo, like, yo, Greece is a. F- also, you mentioned the Ukrainian president before. I don't know if he's president or prime minister. President. Do you know what that guy's story is? He's like a John Stewart guy. Who like played really? the president on the television show? Oh, yeah, is that what he did? Wow! Really? And then he, he the ran on the TV show. It'd be like us voting Denzel because he was on Twenty Four. I mean, buddy, we this country voted for a fucking reality show star, yeah. a guy who played a successful yeah. businessman. That's true. He's not a successful That's businessman. True. He played one on a reality on TV. Show. He's epic. That's the best part about Trump, yo. He's been lying about everything. He's a grifter. Not that he's been lying. He's just. Been marketing himself. Think about what he's doing right now, right? He's undermining democracy. Oh. Well, it's it, the Electoral College voted, so it's done. He's going to fi- fade away a, a little bit. But the last five weeks, he's been undermining the election, undermining democracy. And it's okay if he's some fucking lunatic on Fox News. But he's or the some president lunatic, of the United right. States of America. Like, that, that's a big, like, you that's know what scares me himself. more. He should be I'm protecting not democracy. Listen, are you surprised that he did it? As Donald Trump, he has a human. No, 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 no. Right. I, I fully expect that. shocks it. me is the, the Republicans who signed on to that. They're pussies. They're pu- yeah, they're pussies. Bro, are they pussies? They, call, they want to stop this thing. Listen, what they do what is they? they say, like, oh, Democrats and liberals are snowflakes and, like, they're so triggered. The biggest pussies around Mitch are Republican politicians. They fucking bend right over for Trump. Whatever he says goes. He's literally mid- Des- trying to destroy this country. Yo, but my favorite though and is they're that just one... backing him. Ted Cruz, that fucking pussy. Isn't that I made fun of his wife, called him a Canadian, talked so much shit to him at the primaries, and this guy just bends over. Why? Because 
he's hoping maybe Trump has a fucking heart attack, drops dead. I can be like, I can have some of his fan base. And when I run for president in 2020, I get that fan base, that psychopathic fan Whoa, base. Isn't that? It's crazy, but my favorite you know is that there is the most, one. You know the most, I think that if the, if there could possibly be like a relative a similar situation for Democrats, they would do the same. And I'm not saying for Trump specifically, but how quickly they are to just bend over and take it. Yeah. For the most absurd Listen, things. Democrats, what they do is they're very good at eating their own young. Like <laughs> what? That's uh, uh, just. Know, that, what does that even mean? They like they they're very good at infighting. So, their own song. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. They'll fuck each other over. Like right. with Bernie, Bernie's been getting fucked by the Democratic establishment for years. <clears throat> Bernie's the yo, yo, I've been saying Bernie since May of 2015. Bro. Like, listen, I, I don't know if like higher taxes is the right play, but honestly, I don't get if you make five million dollars a year, I don't give a fuck really about you. Like, good yo, for you. Got it. Respect. Can I tell you a crazy I don't stat? care if you have to pay an extra hundred thousand. It does. I don't give a fuck. Just like you don't give a fuck about me. I don't give a fuck about you, guy who makes five million. You know. Can I tell you a crazy motherfucker? I care stat? about regular people. Me, you, you guys are one percenters. It's fine. Bitcoin millionaires. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Yo, I care yeah, about the jerk off who's cooking at the fucking restaurant, <laughs> who has fucking ten thousand dollars in fucking credit card debt. And can't get fucking health insurance. That's who I care about. Yeah, absolutely. I don't care about the guy who makes five million. He can go fuck himself. You know what the problem is, bro? It's not that the tax rate on the person who makes five million isn't reasonable. It's that the person who makes five million or more finds perfectly legal ways to pay far less than what. They're oh yeah, yeah. Like remember that thing in twenty twelve, whenever it was that Mitt Romney paid less in taxes than his yeah. secretary did. Well, it was yeah. Warren Buffett. Uh, uh, sorry, a smaller tax rate, a smaller yeah. Yeah. percentage. How the like that's what's legal. That's capital our taxes isn't fucked up in, baby. Like, right, exactly. Our taxes isn't fucked up in that, you know, above this percentage. Who wrote the this, tax um, code, the new tax code from the 80s? Who did it? Republicans. I imagine. And corporations. When it's Dems, very easy. Dude, Dems, you know, Dems fucking voted for it too. Right. Dems agreed with it. It's not <clears> that corporate, Democrats are not no. the I don't think there is a party of the working people. I don't I think, think there's so a party either. that's just like blatantly of not the working people and like shits on the working people openly and finds a lot of somehow support amongst the working people. And yeah, then there's another party freedom, that like, right? Exactly. No, freedom. They call themselves liberty. patriots. Like, like they just have buzzwords that they use. That right, exactly. They, yeah, freedom, liberty, best country in the world. You know, and people USA, fucking USA. fall for it, bro. Right. People fall for fucking it. Sick. Okay. Seventy-four million people voted for it. I'm sure they didn't just fight for freedom of like you know. I don't know, Halliburton to make as many even mean? donations as it wants. Yeah. What does that even mean, freedom? Right. It's just a vague, empty term. It's like, and the Democrats do the same thing. I remember I was watching one one day, I got home fucked up. And for some reason, I can't understand in myself that I've been asking psychologists about. I watched a Democratic debate of like months prior, right? The Democratic primaries. And that guy, like Mayor Pete, who seems like a cool dude, seems like a good dude. He became, he was named now Thank you. Secretary was eighth, uh, on the cabinet. Yeah. He's trans- like a reasonable dude. Trans- but he was trans- speaking trans- in like total platitudes. He was like, yeah. we have to oh, yeah. give the working class a chance again. And people were like, fuck yeah. That's what they need to do, though, in politics. They need That's to figure it. out a 10 word sound bite answer that'll stick like, with they, people. They, I don't think they're trying to figure find a sound bite. I think they're trying to find a sound bite that also you can never check and be like, oh, you didn't do that. Right. Yeah. But it's a give the middle like class you said. a chance again. There's it's no nonsense. real thing behind that. And Mayor Pete, that guy. He's corporate bought and sold, bro. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know he was built in a lab by Democrats. He's gay, <laughs> veteran. He was a <laughs> mayor. Perfect. He's handsome. Word. Gay veteran. Get him out today. Yeah. He might have been, and he might be bought out by corporate. But it's crazy what, know. like, the establishment Democrat, like MS, MSNBC and shit. Yeah. Like, they fucking, they are uh, NCN, and they fucking boxed out bernie they boxed out yang yang was getting like 10 12 percent yo listen i don't know i don't know i need i don't know a lot about yang i know he's like gang gang kid he's gang. the man i know the yang gang i know his whole he's spiel good. about like i want to give you 1200 bucks a month or whatever a thousand a month a universal a month, gang. whatever it was and there might be a lot of merit in i haven't looked into it it's an extremely radical proposal that the only way that even ever even maybe becomes any sort of reality is if there's wholesale change in Congress, which right. He's not gonna pass, I just, will I mean, murder people to keep the way the status quo the way it is. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think of that just by making it. I, even if everyone in America voted for Andrew Yang, he's not passing that law. They no. Won. No. Absolutely not. But I, I don't want to talk. But forget about universal basing income. I mean, it'd be nice, sure. How about it would be nice. Free in the sense healthcare. Of, like, everyone gets the How about that? Nice. How about free well, healthcare? I don't know the specifics. It seems Yo. to me to be reasonable. Yo. Oh, here's our here's another lesbian correspondent. correspondent. Lesbian. Hey. Lesbians. Um, so I don't know like what I'm sure universal healthcare has funding issues. I'm sure it has issues related to like, Bro, we wanna go fucking take over Iraq. There's money. There's money we find. I don't know if that's out. like I don't know if it's, it's that, that simple. simple I think bro. that we can maybe it might be. We want to bail like, out. Maybe. We want to bail out the stock market. There's money there. Fed just prints out money and injects it. Right. Okay. The Fed can. If the Fed does does that long term, we're fucked, bro. That's not like a sustainable long term thing. Because there's inflate, listen. Like the there's. Doesn't... I feel like I've read articles where it says like universe, like medical, uh, Medicare for all would actually make healthcare cheaper. I don't know. I don't know what article you. I gotta I, find it. I gotta find it. But I'm yeah, done. Like, what else? Wanna, uh, you got not to else? interrupt. But I gotta battle. Nice you. seeing you. What Love you. Said? I gotta go. She's Bye, leaving. Amanda. Hi. This is the most we've spoken. I know. Something, about, <laughs> something about podcasts. It's been a while. I'll see you on the next one. Love you a lot, Amanda. Bye. Uh, next happy. Ciao, Amanda. That's here from our other lesbian correspondent. And I'm going to continue shitting on American healthcare real quick. So, all right, go ahead. Like, I don't know what the logistics are of sponsoring everybody's healthcare. I don't know what it means or, you know, where they, the cost is relatable to invading Iraq, whatever. There's no way what we have now is the best possible system. Yeah. There's no way. Or profit. Healthcare is fucking stupid. Listen, there might be a way to do healthcare for profit. There's no way the way it is now that my boy from Vanderbilt had to pay seven grand to take a. a Bro, the distance from your house to Fort Hamilton and not even like yeah, five blocks, wow, not crazy. crazy. Just to literally turn on an engine and put him in the back, like, yeah, yeah I get it. There was a medic working, so on. So yeah, there are issues, and I don't know if it's like if the whole issue is you know healthcare shouldn't be for profit or if it should be completely free for all. I don't know. There's no way what we got going now is what's the, the best. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yo, what was your what you think about Bernie? Did you feel the burn? I like Bernie because he ran his mouth. He said what he meant. You know, you could kind of you could trust the fucking guy. That's yo. That was my that, my favorite thing about Bernie was so like uh, a number some local channel in Vermont released his uh, like released these videos like these community channel videos yeah of him talking in the seventies and eighties mm -hmm. and the motherfucker was just saying the same things he said today. Which is like obviously embarrassing for America that we have the same problem. Yeah, and often like, right. But like you know, and I don't want to bash Hillary Clinton because you know, like that's the fashion to bash Hillary Clinton. I'm not gonna be like, oh, in 2005 she said that gays shouldn't be able to get married. This motherfucker's been saying the same thing for 40 years, 50 years, right. and it's very hard. Like, unless you go on the phone of he's a socialist, which like you know a lot of people obviously were. Oh, that was the biggest fucking argument, dude. Why are you why are you voting for Trump, right? A lot of these people are saying because Biden is going to bring socialism. That was it. That was the answer, which I don't even know what the fuck that means. It doesn't mean anything. Right. Bro. That's the thing. If bullshit. You, it could mean something, right? There might be some explanation for why people think that. But if you ask the people whose fundamental argument pro-Trump is that Biden is going to bring about socialism, and you ask, yo, what socialism is going to bring about? They have no idea. What, they have no idea. I mean, we have they socialism just wanted, now, bro. Medic, Medicaid, Medicare, social uh, security. We have certain things that I'm not, and I don't know. National I'm not defense advocating. is, a, national defense technically is a social program. The fire department, all these things. And again, I'm not advocating for like total socialism. I don't know. No, of course not. Socialism. There needs to be a balance. You need to see but where the problems to... are and fix them pragmatically, logically, and the right way. Not you know what the issue in the is? way I that's going to line the most pockets. What I think the issue is, is that it's about lining the most pockets and also about convincing the most votes. Like, so the percentage of people who are against the um, the estate tax, which is mm -hmm. paying a certain tax on the wealth that you pass on to the next generation when you die. Yeah. is something like the percentage of people who are pro there being an estate tax are, is something, something above 60%. Right. The percentage who's in favor of a death tax. Yeah, it's something like 45%. The, right, and it's the yeah. same thing, Dimitri. I understand it's that. The same, they're the same thing. Right. It's they're, they're just marketing. And like, I think there's a cap on the estate tax. Marketable. Hello? I think, like, to get technical, I think there's a cap on it. 
like five mil or something. Right, above five million. Yeah. So it's above I understand the beef with that, like where, you know, I like just, this money, this money has been taxed already. Right, right. I don't want to touch on the. I don't want to touch on the merits of having a, well, just the marketing wise, like the brand. Just the of, fact that you call it an estate tax yeah. and you have sixty percent, and you call it a death tax and you have thirty five percent, and yeah. we're talking about the same motherfucking thing. Right, and we expect this to be the best way for us to like promote policy. Right, as a you know, we're not going to get anywhere like that. Then we're just going to pander to the best marketer, and we're basically putting the best marketers the, in charge of our. That's the name of the business, bro. That's marketing terrifying. controls everything. That's terrifying. Marketing break makes or breaks shit. From brands to bills to you know like laws to to um, political that's fucking good. people. It's, for some reason, it's much more scary to me when it has to do with the democ- like because that's a pseudo dem- that's a fraudulent democracy. Yeah, it's brutal, bro. I mean, listen, you just you saw case in point like this whole year early on with the impeachment. Um, it was straight banana republic shit. Like they subpoenaed Bolton. They subpoenaed Pompeo. They subpoenaed people. The Congress of the United States subpoenaed these guys and they refused to show up. Right. Because they were going to perjure themselves under oath because they weren't going to like they were or they were going to tell the truth. Do you, about, subpoena, like, do you have to show up? What subpoena? Yeah. yeah. Usually, I mean, the subpoena is like a, like you have to go to court, you get subpoenaed. Like if you don't come, if you'll you be get a law. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. And they got subpoenaed, and they still didn't show. They up. They didn't show up, and it's not like some bullshit law. It's the Congress of the United States. So the impeachment in the House was basically like the grand jury that brings charges. So they brought charges on Trump, and the Senate trial is like a trial. During the trial in the Senate, they didn't call witnesses. They didn't do anything. The chief justice was presiding over the trial. He stood like completely neutral, basically. He didn't like say, okay, we need these. We need these amount of witnesses in this way, like no procedure. And what ended up happening because the Republicans had the majority was he got acquitted, even though he was guilty of it. What what the charges were. Just to clarify. So basically, regard if let's say in advance the Republicans had said we're not going to vote in favor, yeah. Regardless of what was presented, he still would have been found innocent. Yeah, that's yeah. He's still that, impeached that's technically, process. but he was never removed. Right, but impeaching is just like bringing him to trial. It's not about exactly. Yeah, him out. that's like so the, the speci- decision about like the forcing him out. Term that so the decision did. about forcing him out was if the Republicans agreed, he would not be forced out. Right. How is that going to work? That's what happened. That's exactly what happened. That's how it works? I didn't know that. Bro, if you saw like the highlights of the trial, it's bullshit. It's just the only thing they allowed was um, senators to be able to talk and like the legal representatives to be able to talk. And at no point were any witnesses called, like in the House one. It was and like during the House impeachment, the as a woman, as uh, like she was a state, I think she was. I think she was somebody in this from the State Department who was testifying. As she's testifying, he's tweeting, talking smack about her, like you know, basically it. threatening the witness. And this is the president. This isn't just some orange fucking real uh, reality show star. He's the president. Like it, his words mean something. The office means something. And um, so wait, just to get this crazy. clear, the jury, the jury, he had to or his lawyer had to convince was were. Was the Congress? Yeah, whether Basically. were the Republican senators? Yeah. First, they voted it in the House of Representatives to impeach. They impeached because the Democrats had the majority. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> the House decides who to impeach. Okay, got it. And then it went to the Senate, and the Senate acquitted. But like the trial was just a sham trial. A sham trial. Listen, regardless of what evidence was presented, from the moment that the jury is the Senate. Yeah. Is likely the people who you know support like right that, and now that I think about, has any president been successfully impeached? Like they've been Clinton was impeached, removed. Removed. I don't think anyone's been removed. I think Andrew Jackson was also impeached. Right, he was impeached. Nixon was impeached. Clinton. No, was, Nixon was, wasn't impeached. He resigned before. He resigned before he was impeached or before he was tried. Before he articles of impeachment, he res, he resigned. Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay, so Trump is the third president to be impeached, huh? Yeah. It's funny. They said third president. It was a third president. He got impeached. He lost both popular votes. 
and he only served one term. He's like the only person that's ever done that. The you, first time against Hillary, he lost by 2.8 million votes. Which is bananas. And he won 77,000 between three states, and he became the president. Do you have? I have a question. Regardless of how we decide who ultimately wins the camp of the election, I'm I'm also worried about you know how we ultimately determine who wins the election. But also the oh, like the election's said, the gone. People, right, the election's gone. I know that. But the number of people who voted for Trump kind of terrifies me. Even yeah, if wow. Biden win, right? Biden won, which is I'm happy about. He but, smacked them like he smacked them in the right. In he, the, he, the shit, he landslide. Seven landslide. million votes is a lot. And he won the election. Right. But still, I'm still 74 terrible. million I'm people voted for Trump. It's crazy. Right. Exactly. Yeah, you, know, like, you ever walk down the street and think like this motherfucker? That mother... Bro, I, I see it all the time. I really... yeah, in New York, you know, where where I live and, you know, the people, not the people that I know Listen, so much. I'm sure Bay Ridge, I'm sure Bay Ridge is one of the more... Yeah, it's, I mean, I, honestly, Bay Ridge is more Democrat, supposedly. But like the loudest like people... Benson, heavy, yeah. Yeah, the loudest people are Republicans. They run their fucking mouths off. Like, they know what they're talking about, and they have no fucking clue what they're talking about. No one is rich enough to benefit from Republicans' laws. Nobody. You, need, you, to make, you need to make obscene amounts of money. If you're a guy who makes a buck fifty a year, it's a, res- it's a lot of money. It's a respectable thing in America, and in New York specifically, it's expensive. That's but a whole lot of money. you're not benefiting from that. You need to make yeah. four hundred thousand dollars a year more or more to be in the one percent. How many? How much? Four hundred grand a year. No, but, I mean, but like well, so nobody we'll makes four hundred grand a year. Nobody. Four hundred grand is a banana. That's why it's one percent of people do. It's a banana amount of money. Crazy. Like, remind, remind me later to tell you about Jeff something about Jeff Bezos. Um, but it's a banana amount of money, and I think that's like what we were saying earlier about estate tax versus death tax. The marketing thing is that. That's they've managed to market that if you're somebody who doesn't want to get welfare and wants to work hard for the American sure. dream, the Republican Party is the party for you. Whereas the truth is, if you make upwards of half a million dollars a year, eh, nah, the Republican Party might be good for you. Sure. That's not like you said, that's nobody. And bro, not even like, sell it. like if you're just making half a million dollars a year working at a company, right? Mm-hmm. And that's your income. It's not capital gains. It's not investments. It's just straight income. You're just getting paid. You're getting you're you're gonna probably end up spending about forty five to fifty percent of your money in taxes. Is going to taxes. Okay. The difference is what maybe thirty grand a year, if fifteen twenty grand a year. Like if you're smart and you're making half a million dollars a year, that fifteen twenty grand really doesn't mean much to you. If you're smart with your money, if you don't blow your money. Right. Like it's not like yeah, a, it's not a money. windfall. It's not like, oh, I'm going to vote Republican and there's going to be a huge windfall. Okay. Yeah, okay I I so much money, I'm going to end up making 200 grand more a year from saving a tax. Right. Not happening. It's not that you're getting a 50 percent pay. Right. Bump, you're getting a not happening. percent pay bump. Yeah. And you know what the problem is? Marketing and like being conditioned going back to is that everybody thinks. The American dream, right? Make a lot of money, have a house, car, nice, you know, all the good shit. Yeah, everybody thinks they're gonna be rich at some point. I they heard won't this. be. Vast majority will not be rich, but everybody so, thinks they'll be rich. So when I first moved to when I first went to college in uh, Scotland, one of the first people I like met and talked to was this like fifty year old lady who like was American but had lived in Scotland for thirty years, and she said that the biggest difference that I've understood between America and Europe is that in Europe. In both America and Europe, we acknowledge that there are poor people. In America, all the poor people think they're going to be rich someday. Yeah, that's the American dream, which like, right, which is which is crazy. awesome. And I'm sure, yeah, but it's still that, with right. Well, the, the American dream is not really correct, but believing in the American dream, I'm sure, increases the likelihood of it being correct. But I don't think lawmaking should be done based on, or policy making should be done based on what will make Americans think they're going to do best and what, you know, right. should be based on like, what is best for what makes sense. Right. And that's Americans. And that's all over the globe. America. It's not just American politics that are fucked up. Everywhere is fucked up. And the funny, the interesting oh. thing is like, yeah, no, nothing's going to be perfect. The interesting Ever. thing is like, whether it's Medicare for all or actually affordable health care, all developed countries 
Canada, yeah, all crazy. the countries in Europe this is have crazy. healthcare for people. Yeah. Whether it's universal yeah. basic healthcare or some kind of hybrid, yeah. this isn't happening anywhere else. And everyone likes that they like to bring up the point like, oh, but when somebody needs a a, 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 a surgery, they come to America. That's bullshit. Rand Paul, that fucking lunatic, when he had a hernia he needed to take care of, he went to Canada for surgery. Did he really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I guess the best guys up in Canada. Okay. So like that has nothing to do with what fucking the talking point that everyone says is absolute bullshit. And I don't know why they say it. They don't own the insurance companies. They're not doctors that make all this money. They're regular people. They're not rich people. They're normal people. You, that you're saying up. they? Are you mean they lawmakers or are they like oh, voters? That's a big like talking point from everybody. For voters, bro. For voters yes. or for lawmakers? For people. Right, yeah, yo, for, people, for voters. yo, Dimitri, if we look at the things that people have said, it's a bogus individual voters, like, crazy to me. It, yo, which listen, people have said if you look at any almost any voters sort of like record of saying things over the last 10 years, they have since then disagreed with themselves and probably disagreed then again. And so, bro, on this is I've been hearing this like, oh, yeah, if you need a surgery in England, you have to wait two months. Like, I don't believe that either. I'm sure there's probably yeah, well, some weight, but there's some weight here too. Like you're not gonna go with surgery the next fucking day. All right. And if I get appendicitis in America, I'm gonna go bankrupt. Yeah. Like, also, like, I'm not saying that there should be weights weights for surgery. Like I understand that obviously for some. Well, yeah, surgery, if you need your appendix removed, right, and you don't have insurance, you're probably gonna get like a sixty thousand dollar bill. That's bananas. Right. Right. It's and you're gonna bananas. get people calling you like bill collectors, like, "Oh, we need the yeah. money." I know. Well, and if you're some it? guy making sixty grand a year, right? After taxes is forty grand, eight hundred dollars a week. Your your rent in New York, or let's say your median rent is twelve hundred dollars a month, and you have bills. Maybe you save ten grand a year. Maybe you're gonna pay a sixty thousand dollar fucking bill. What's right. gonna happen is you're gonna get calls well, evening, from bro. finance companies to be like, you know what? We'll pay it. You pay us back at ten percent interest. You know, I mean, I mean, what are you gonna do? You gonna go to the hospital? You gonna pay your bills? Or are you gonna have your fucking? You gonna cut your appendix out yourself? What are you gonna do? So somebody, I heard some like Republican argument about this being like, you know, you have to negotiate it. That's the free market, so on and so forth. Like, let's say you need to get your kidney removed. Are you gonna sit and fucking negotiate with before, like, on your on the exam table? Yeah, exactly. Be like, yo, use the other scalpel because I know it's cheaper. Because if you don't have insurance, right, and you need an emergency surgery. This is my yeah. negotiation when you get that $70,000 bill. I'm paying zero. Go fuck yourself. There are, uh, yeah, that's... That's I mean, what that's 40% the of the people that go bankrupt in this country do. And you know what? Rightfully so. Fuck that. Terrible. Listen, y'all, I get it. But it's ridiculous. No, 40% is... It's ludicrous. ridiculous. Is a ludicrous. For not doing... Like, yo, America, listen. America loves to shit on people who try to get more than they deserve, right? America loves shitting on welfare queens or America loves shitting on so on and so forth and all these things. It's... I can't imagine people making arguments that the motherfucker who got appendicitis deserved it. And I keep using appendicitis as an example, but whatever. Like, If somebody ever made that argument, they're a piece of shit. They're just a bad person that needs to be shot in space. Yo, if them into a fucking spacecraft and shoot them out there. Right, but the thing is, if we keep... Our healthcare system, as is, from what I understand of our healthcare systems, I'm not a fucking congressman, but it fucks people. That's what it is. Like that's what it is now. So we have that, and we just accept, and we we're like America's the best. USA, USA. If you say anything bad about America, go fucking move to another country. Right. Which, like, honestly, Easy. go move to another country. Yeah, most other countries do it better than us. Let's be the real. Specific thing. Healthcare. Yeah, absolutely. Bro, America, Canada, Cuba, Cuba. Cuba's much better. Than they that. have a fucking higher life expectancy than us. Almost all the countries in fucking Europe, Japan is by far much more uh, life expectancy is far higher than us. Hello. Let's say let's say life expectancy isn't the most easily comparable thing, right? Let's say that life expectancy has to do with diet, which has to do with climate right. and working on the globe. Sure. Possible. To compare purely. What about infant mortality? American healthcare outcomes with American spending on healthcare. America okay. spends. More than like a lot of countries combined, similar That's to crazy, the but our outcomes are like 37. We have a lower, like you said, because lower life. Everything is for profit here, 
no matter what. Yeah, that's the thing. America is just pig capitalism and let the rules of it be set by the people who were best at fine. capitalism. For profit's fine. But the problem is, like, it's always focused on growth. Like, you can't, if you're not growing, you're dying. Doesn't matter. We need to grow. You need to yeah. make more money all the time, no matter what, like clockwork. If you don't make more money, even though you're still profitable and you made the same amount of money as last year, you, you fucked up somehow. Right, exactly. Yeah, something gone wrong. Yeah. You and in terms of insurance and healthcare, you're talking about pe- the money and the dollar signs is people getting sick and dying. That's, pe- that's the difference. Listen, so I think that so the way Republicans have easy talking points, I think Democrats have easy talking points. And one of them is that like putting a price on lives thing. Cause like we always have to put a price on lives. Sure. The example I said earlier with speed limits, right? The reason right. we travel at 65 and not. So we do, it's not that this is coronavirus is our first time putting a price on lives or that we can't no. put a price right. on lives. We should, we have to, unfortunately, it's one of the sort of necessities of, constructing civilization yeah but i don't but, think it should be a for-profit motive right exactly connected it shouldn't be, healthcare. You shouldn't, it shouldn't be that you want to get you want to survive go bank this motherfucker yeah it shouldn't right. be that ruin yeah, your you credit like, exactly you know it's that that, financially the ruin that yourself. yeah the fact that it's like okay here are your options either you die now or you stay alive and are in financial ruins for the rest of your life right let us know what you want. Well, look at this. Not like, only that, but you're expected to negotiate on the operating right. table. When you have those options. Be like, listen, what if you just take out one kidney and then right. use my liver to like. Can I sell the kidney well, when we take it out? Is it my property? Let me sell it on the dark one. I wonder that. I wonder that. So there was when I, there was a, there was a, when I, in study abroad, like in orientation, they had told us that there was a ring of American students who were going to countries like Turkey and like Cambodia and so on and so forth. And who during orientation had been warned that like, Hey, be careful because people will kidnap you and sell your kidneys because kidneys go for 15,000 and American passports go for 50,000. And so there was this ring that formed that was like, okay, we'll sell our kidneys and our passports for 70 grand combined. Right. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's, and the other scam which we don't have to get into today. I'd like to revisit it with you. Is Imagine student it. loans? <laughs> it's fucked up. I kept, I, it it's kept ringing up. in the back of my head as we were having this conversation. Yeah. The only the the one thing I know about student loans that's been and you know it's bananas. What's going on? The one thing that I've heard about student loans that I need to confirm is true is that even if you declare bankruptcy, your student loans still exist. Yeah, that's true. What the fuck? It's true. What? Yeah, it's fucked up. You know why? Because the federal government uh, backs the student loans. Right. So, like, even if you don't pay and you refuse to pay your delinquent on it, the federal government's paying it or has paid it. So I heard somebody, when I was in school, we had this, like, economist of education give a talk. And he said that one of the reasons that American education is so expensive is because with student loans and, like, these grants and whatever those things are called, basically the government tells universities not directly but indirectly that hey whatever you charge people we're gonna cover it and so they're like all right so like fuck it all right fuck it we'll raise it five grand grand. 15 grand no do you you know 65 thousand for van i had done all four years at vanderbilt that would have been 250 yeah and what would a year you would have gotten a fucking degree in fucking business or business management or whatever economics (laughs) then what you're going out and getting a job maybe you're gonna get a job doing 40 grand a year Listen, I might have got a job doing God knows what, but I also could have spent the shocking thing is not to get 250 grand to get what I could have spent 250 grand to get a degree in comparative middle American literature. Right. And only thing you could do there is teach that class with that. Either teach that class or just like, you know, right. Keep telling people I'm a writer and have nothing. Not worth the investment. It's not only not worth the investment, but the fact that A, 95% 95% of the other students in my class would have taken a loan to do it. B, even if they had gotten completely out of money and declared bankruptcy, they would still owe that loan. And no. C, universities, you know, universities have crazy amounts of money. I, I saw Huge this thing. Endowments, in yeah. They got big cocks. Yo, have you seen, yo, have you seen Harvard's endowments compared to the costs of... Wasn't so it like... You, 
a hundred billion or some ridiculous some number. bananas number. Yeah. It might have been one billion. Even yo, even if it's a billion, a billion is a crazy motherfucking number. Just but it was some large there, which they they give it to a financial like a hedge fund and they fucking trade right. it. You know, but they trade. So there was a it was a story about how Harvard had lost something like two hundred million or I don't remember the specific number on a an investment in a Brazilian some Brazilian like production land thing. Right. Right. And so they lost X amount of money, and this article was talking about it covering it as, as like a bad investment story and was saying how that amount which is you know point or 1.6 percent of harvard's endowment covers entire cost of student tuition for three years and it's like what the fuck are these universities Wait. doing with 100 years worth okay. of like are they just hedge funds with us with an education business just like tacked onto it pretty much that's what they become yeah it's fucked up, man. Like, shouldn't we deal with that as a as a society on some level? Like, I get it, free market, rah rah rah. But at some point, we got to be like, I, right, this is crazy. Like, let's talk about this serious. No one gives a fuck, bro. It's, except for like the, the like the Bernies and shit, and they're called crazy socialists. Yo, I'm sure some Republicans give a fuck too. Yeah, like, but I don't, don't think it don't that think much to like uh to just not like uh, wipe out the debt. It's like 1.7 trillion the total debt. I think, yeah. What what is it? One point seven trillion is our debt for schools, for colleges, like student loans. Oh, that's yeah. a crazy number. No, the U.S. debt is like twenty seven trillion. I, because whenever you talk about government, especially when it comes to America, which is humongous, you hear these giant numbers. So, Jeff Bezos is worth like a hundred and something billion dollars, yeah. right? Okay, if Jeff Bezos was born the same day as Jesus Christ and made 180 grand a year, a day, a day, he would have less money than Jeff Bezos. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's not crazy. That's miles past crazy, bro. And think of this. Bezos and Elon Musk, because Tesla's stock is just out of the control. Mm-hmm. These guys, and like Zuckerberg, these guys over the last seven, eight months have like doubled – or like 70% up their net worth because the stock market's dominating. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, like people can't pay rent. They can't fucking get food. They can't open their fucking restaurant to make money and pay their workers. But these guys, their fucking net worths have gone up from, you know, 100 billion to 180 billion. So during the I don't same know if time. Right. At the same time, I don't know if. I, I, if I can say that they don't deserve to have increased, like, because I'm not what, saying they're... that they don't, like, I'm saying what's going on is fucked right. up. And what's the, the best way to fix that is not to, you know, make some convoluted thing about how CEOs make their money off stock. It's just fucking tax them. Sure. And also, right now, when things are fucked up and struggling, stop going back and forth and nickel and diming each other on a stimulus package. But I, 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 I don't even think it's get it but done. I think the issue isn't that they're nickel and diming each other because if they were both genuinely fighting for what they believe are the interests of the American people, I'm okay with nickel and diming because yeah, they're not though. They're putting in a fucking that's corporate the liability they're shield. They're just listening to whoever's lubing their ass. So people can't like so if you're forced to work or fired because you don't want to get COVID or you have COVID and you can't come into work, you can't sue your employer who fired you. That's that's what Republicans are putting in. Like that's a right. joke. That's it's not just you're a, it's, wasting time. It's despicable. On that, you cannot have a position Fuck. that is granted by the American people or whatever people that is supposed to be you know, entrusting you with their well-being and their the laws that they abide by and so on. And you're blatantly acting. Just do your job. You know, what your job is as a senator or congressperson is benefit public safety and help the people when they fucking need it. And Just right now, people exactly. need it. Exactly. Your I'm ultimate done. That's incentive it. is the well is the, <laughs> your, your incentive is the well being of the people. It's right. not the well being of the people who campaigned for you, or the people who invested in you, or oh your buddy used to work at Halliburton. So right, yeah. Blah blah blah. Your campaign uh, donor. If exactly if they just agreed that hey, and they acted upon it, that our ultimate incentive is the well being of the American people. Right. I can't imagine they'd be having these fights. So I think oh. I think it's it's petty. It's not petty. It's a uh, fruitless for us to discuss the fights themselves. Yeah. Instead of being like, "Hey, what's your motivation that you're getting into this fight? What's your motivation for getting into that fight?" That's the fucked up part. Right. 
We'll get into the fights. We're fucked. Yeah, right, we're people. That's the lesbian okay. report. That's I like it. Expect report. more of this. I want to do this more often with you. Yo, we're here, bro. We are, we are quarantined. We have quarantine. My cousin problems. Alex, cutie with the mustache. You're looking jacked, by the way. Uh, it's the t shirt. I what are you guys doing? You, you guys juicing it. over there? What are you guys doing in Greece? We are, there's a lot of anabolic sauce being injected into our butts. You're doing the sauce? Butts. We're doing the sauce. We're doing the sauce aggressive. Yorgo has gotten me into yoga lately. I want to get into yoga. It sounds, seems like it's Yo. a nice workout and it's relaxing. And it, like, it benefits you mentally afterwards. Dimitri, Google this. I'll send you the link. It's called Sean Vig, this dude. It's a 10-minute morning yoga. I love I got, it. Uh, Quick. You know, I got one of our friends over here who hasn't moved his body in 12 years to do it this morning. Yeah, I'm in a rascal scooter. I don't I haven't moved my body either. What the fuck is a rascal scooter? You know, like those scooters? No, I don't mind. The like, the, 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 the no, like the people that like when they're super obese, they can't walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not. A, Yo, not yet. it's the easiest. It's 12 minutes. It's stupid easy. And I realized the other day that over the, probably the last two months of quarantine, more days have I done yoga than I've showered. That's that's and bad. It's bad on one you hand. Totally on hand, shower. Like, really Even if you're yoga. not doing anything and it's locked down, wash your ass. Right, wash my ass. I probably could. Wash you know my what I'm ass. saying? If I'm gonna give Are you a person one thing of advice, it's wash your ass. Yo, question, honest question: loofah or no? Yeah. Yeah, huh? It's not a loofah. It's like a scrunchy thing. I don't no, know. That's, that's the classic thing yeah, you hang yeah. off some random right, yeah. in your bathtub. Uh, religiously. All right. Religiously, huh? I love not, that shit. It's the, the suds everywhere. It's nice, right? But like, does it keep last Tuesday's suds? That's what's scary. Well, no, you ring it out every time you're done. You're a better showerer than I am. Yeah, that's you a are. job in the shower. After you're done washing your ass, you <laughs> ring out the soap and shit as much as you can, and you hang it. No, I'm just a dirt bag. I'm just a dirt probably. Bag. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss on the next lesbian letter. report. My name. The name of the show is gonna be called the Daily Taco. Best name possible. I'm the Tacos. God bless you. God bless America. God bless Greece. Much love. Thanks we'll for talking. Talk on the next edition. Bye. Bye.